ABC Sports, college football, and the CFA present a Southwest Conference matchup. Today, it's the Longhorns of Texas traveling to Waco to take on the Baylor Bears. And as we check the Southwest Conference standings right now, really a log jam near the top. Conceivably, five teams could share the Southwest Conference title. Both of these teams here today. Baylor still has an outside shot at going to the Cotton Bowl. Texas A&M, of course, still undefeated, but ineligible for the title and for postseason play. And hi, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Glad you could join us in Waco today. I'm Terry Gannon, along with John Spagnola. And John, you know, you look at Baylor and Chuck Reedy in his second year as the head coach. He wanted to get to today and have a shot at the title. He's here. That's right. Chuck Reedy brings energy and enthusiasm to this football team. And when you watch them play on the field, they're wide open on offense. They like to do a lot of blitzing on defense. This football team is an extension of his personality. They have a lot of fun playing football. On the flip side, Texas kind of an up and down inconsistent year, but change is the buzzword for John Makovic today. He's going to start the normal backup quarterback, James Brown. That's right. James Brown will start today. He's 2-0 and as a starter. This is one of his starts against Oklahoma. He won that football game. He also won the last game against Houston, and he brings speed and elusiveness to this football team. It's going to present some problems for this Baylor defense. Yeah, James Brown and his two starts completing nearly 80% of his passes. Well, kick back, grab a drumstick, and enjoy the Longhorns and the Bears on ABC. Welcome back to Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Texas on a cloudy, cool day as we get set for the Longhorns and the Bears. The third member of our team is Jack Arute, who is down on the field. Jack, what do you have for us? Well, Terry, you and John were talking about the success of Chuck Reedy with the Baylor Bears. Well, the same cannot be said for the head coach of the Texas Longhorns. John Makovic, in the middle of his contract, has received all kinds of external heat in Austin and throughout the state of Texas, criticizing his coaching, criticizing his decisions concerning the team. When I spoke to John last night, though, he said that external pressure has brought his team closer together. There were a lot of I guys on the team at the beginning of the season, but they've closed ranks and they've become a we, we team. Now, I also had a feeling that maybe he might be leaving, but after talking to him last night, he's not going anywhere. He'll be back coaching at Texas next year. All right, Jack, thank you. And a look at Chuck Reedy, 7-3 and three this year. And a solid two years here as the head football coach. He was the offensive coordinator prior to that and was an assistant coach at Clemson for Danny Ford for many years. Well, you look at what these two teams have done. The series record, 58-21 and 4, Texas leading that last year the longhorns with a 38 to 17 win but here in waco baylor has won eight of the last ten at floyd casey stadium baylor won the toss but they deferred to the second half so texas will receive and back deep there's a look at eric jackson the speedster and a wide out and getting it underway jarvis van dyke and ty atterbury the kicker actually will kick off 48 degrees and John Witt may play a factor 10 to 15 miles an hour out of the south well you have two good field goal kickers on both teams but yes that is why Baylor took the win to start the game and this one will sail with the win back deep Curtis Jackson and out of the end zone for the Longhorn will come out to the 20 and start there and as we mentioned James Brown the normal backup quarterback to Shea Morant who had a record-setting year last year but Brown in his two starts has been tremendous and look at what he's done overall seven touchdowns and only two interceptions and a quarterback unlike Shea Morant that can get out of the pocket and cause some troubles and I think Baylor may be more concerned about Brown and his running ability than anything else that's right they fully expected Brown to start today and as you know Baylor likes to blitz that means players be locked in man coverage downfield their backs will be turned to Brown. He could run for some yardage when he scrambles. Roderick Water, Walker, the lone setback. And Eric Jackson in motion to the near side. And a play action, and here comes Brown out of the pocket. Throws and has his tight end at the 35 up to the 40-yard line. Pat Fitzgerald on the catch and a big gain on first down for the Longhorn. But Curtis Jones there to make the hit. You look at the wideouts and the backs. Lavelle Pinkney, a big play man, 6'5", 245 pounds, and they love to throw it up. Just let him run under it and go get it against those small defensive backs. And the offensive line anchored by Blake Brockermeyer. Everybody's All-American, a guy who was a consensus All-Southwest Conference player last year. Some speculation that he'll come out after this year. So first down at the 40-yard line. And Brown gives 
to Walker. Looking for room near side across the 45 to the 47 yard line. And Curtis Jones again in on the stop. Now look at the Baylor defense. Gardner and Lewis, the two keys up front. Scotty Lewis, who has been injured, did not practice all week long. We'll see how long he can go. And the Curtis Jones, who's been in on the first two stops already, the number one tackler on this Baylor defense. Not very big at all. He is a small linebacker. Adrian Robinson, the coaches here think he is as good as any strong safety in the country. Second down and four. The 47 yard line. Split back. With a lot of time is Brown, and here is that scrambling ability we talked about. Across midfield, he has a first down into Baylor territory, out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Jones again on the tackle, knocking him out. But a big gain for James Brown. James Brown wanted to set up a screen to the left side to Rod Walker, his tailback. And this is the added dimension that he gives you to Shea Morant's camp. And that's he takes a bad play. Baylor had the right defense called. And he turns it into a positive game and a first down for Texas. Well, Baylor worried about his scrambling because they have a, a strong defensive front, but they're banged up today. They've got a couple of guys who are not 100% if not playing. So first down at the 37. And here is the deep back. Priest Holmes wrapped up, maybe a gain of one. That's about it. Adrian Robinson with Curtis Jones again in on the tackle. Well, you talk about what this offense has done. The Texas offense, basically a passing offense, 215 yards on the year. The Baylor defense giving up 205 in the air. But for John McEvick, I think that changes a little bit today with the, the change at quarterback. Uh, I think it does. Texas is second last in rushing, but oddly enough, Bob Cope, the defensive coordinator for Baylor, said the thing he was most concerned about was being able to hold up against the rush. Second and 10 at the 38. After no gain on that play. Back to throw again. And looking deep and has a man wide open at the 10-yard line. That Jackson into the end zone. Touchdown Longhorn. For Eric Jackson, his seventh touchdown catch of the year. A 37-yard strike from Brown, and I would say that's pretty impressive on the first series for Texas. Yeah, Texas has had trouble scoring in the first quarter this year. They only had 50 points so far this season, and 17 of that was against Houston, so they've averaged about 3.3 points in the first quarter, but James Brown has a way of igniting this offense. They rally around him when they play football. He did an excellent job on that drive. Bill Dawson in for the point after. 29 out of 29 on the year. And it is good. Well, the Longhorns impressive on their first drive. They take it down the field under the direction of James Brown. The touchdown strike to Eric Jackson. Wide open up the far sideline, and Texas leads it by a touchdown early. First drive of the game, five plays, 80 yards, and only two minutes off the clock, and Texas already on top with a touchdown, a 37-yard strike to that man, Eric Jackson. Back deep for Baylor, Khalif Muhammad, number one, and Ben Bronson, number two. And that's Bill Dawson, who will kick it away for the Longhorn. And a sky kick, which comes down at about the 25-yard line. And hit right there, still on his feet. Across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Texas is using the window with a pooch kick, trying to get it up in the air and get the coverage team down as quickly as possible. Clifton Rubin on that last return. And a look at the quarterback, Jeff Watson. Still a youngster. Only a freshman out of College Station, Texas. Had great numbers in high school, won a state championship. Look what he's done this year. And that is with a team that basically has run the option out of the eye. So they are not necessarily a throwing football team. He's been impressive. And you talk to the coaches, he's gotten better each week in terms of reading defenses, handling the system. They give him more to handle every game, too, each week. And he has done a great job. For a freshman, he has shown an uncanny ability to be able to master this offense so quickly. Bronson in motion to the near side. Out of the eye and the pitch to the tailback. Mohammed, who sidesteps the tackler, gets across the 40, maybe to the 41-yard line. And a look at the backs and receivers. Ben Bronson, a big play man. He scored on a reverse, a kickoff return, 
top receiver on this team. Has great speed at that wideout position. And on the offensive line, big Fred Miller, a three-year starter, all Southwest Conference, playing his best football of his career, they say right now. Second down and five after the five-yard gain by Muhammad. In motion is Stanley to the far side now. Watching the throw on second down has John Stanley, and he has a first down. Knocked out of bounds at the 48-yard line by Taji Allen, the quarterback. After the Longhorns defensively, Tony Bracken, another guy who should be an All-American. You talk to coaches, only a sophomore around this league, they say he is the best at that spot. Kyle Richardson today getting a start at the inside linebacker position for Kevin Watler, who has battled injuries throughout his career, and he is out today. Joey Ellis, a big play man in the secondary. Best man-to-man -man coverage guy. So first and 10 at the 47 for the Bears. Play action, Watson looking over the middle and has a man wide open. That's Bronson inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. Chris Carter, the free safety on the coverage. Watch how the play action fake freezes the linebackers. Watson extends the football to the back. Now, looks like run. All the linebackers are stepping up. Bronson comes right across the middle. He's locked in man coverage, actually loses the cornerback. And Chris Carter, the safety, has to make the tackle. But you can see why Watson is so impressive. He knew exactly where he was going with the football. He read the coverage very quickly, and he got the ball on a strike to Bronson. Gain of 25 on the play, and... Now it's first and ten at the 27 of the long run. Out of the stacked eye, and that is the up back. Bradford Lewis straight ahead to about the 23-yard line. Baylor on offense this year has been the opposite of Texas, really. They've been a rushing team. 218 yards a game, and you've been able to run on the Texas defense, 165 yards. But the thing is, John, now with the development of Watson, this offense changes. There are a lot of options in the option offense. They will, will do a lot of different things. As uh, Jack Crow, their offensive coordinator, says we just peck, peck, peck and figure out what we want to do during the course of the game. First carry for Brandell Jackson. Straight ahead, about the 20-yard line. Tyson King, the inside linebacker and number one tackler on the defense, makes the stop. But this team is primarily a running team. Their tailbacks combined. They have three different tailbacks playing in this football team. And they rank 18th in the nation in running. So that's what they like to do offensively. And then everything else they do extends off of that. Well, it is chilly today. 10 o'clock Central time start. 48 degrees, a little bit windy, but offense pumped up early on both sides. Third down and three at the 20. And movement as someone jumped across the line. Might have been 20 brackets who came across, and we'll see how they call it. Either Tony Brackens or Chris Aiken came right across the middle on the center. Well, we're going to have to use our eyes today because the equipment is not working on our referee, Doyle Jackson. It is against the defense. So take a look and see if we can pick it up. Right in the middle, number 98, that is Tony Bracken. And if you'll recall, Baylor shifted and did some movement. He's trying to anticipate the snap count. He usually plays on the tackles. They're trying to get a mismatch there with Tony Bracken. And coaches get very upset when a guy who's standing right over the football jumps offside. Uh, you know, unless the center moves the ball at all and gives you that little, that little fake, there's no reason for that. So first and 10 at the 15 now. And here is Jackson hit right at the line of scrimmage and stops there. Chris Aikens, a freshman out of Paris, Texas, making the hit. Aikens is a young man who was pressed into duty. He's a true freshman on this football team. And man, is he strong. He power lifts almost 2,000 pounds. He has a 470-pound bench, 825-pound squat. Six, let me just say one thing. He's strong, and he's playing the perfect position for a guy of that kind of strength. The old tight ends for the Eagles used to bench about that? <laughs> yeah, in about a week or two, I'd get that much more. <laughs> Second and nine at the 14. As Muhammad goes in motion, watching the throw. John Stanley at the goal line. And down inside the one. Taji Allen, the cornerback on the coverage number two. And there is Watson. Watson is a JC uh, transfer from Kilgore. And I watched this guy on practice the other day on Tuesday. He is so quick. His excellent hands. He is just well to the football. And there he was locked one-on-one -on -one with Taji Allen. 
on the short side of the football field. And again, you can see the development of Jeff Watson going to the one-on-one -on -one receiver. Crawford in motion, straight ahead, Clifton moving, touchdown. And Baylor answers the first drive of Texas convincingly. Well, Ruben is no stranger to the end zone. That's his ninth touchdown of the year. Power formation right over to center guard gap. You can see a good surge by that offensive line. Clifton has no problem getting into the end zone. Well, if you're Chuck Reedy right now, you're going to be awfully happy about the way you came back. You know, it's just like baseball when the team posts a big number in the top half of the inning. You want to come back and at least score in the bottom half, and the Bears have answered. Jarvis Van Dyke on for the extra point. And it is perfect. So the Bears come back as they drive down the field and answer the Texas touchdown. We are tied at seven. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. Microsoft, where do you want to go today? And O'Doul, it's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. And a look at the suspension bridge built in 1870. First bridge across the Brazos River in the southwest. Horse and buggies cross that and still in existence today. Clifton Rubin with a touchdown to put Baylor on the board and to tie this one up 7-7. Seven to seven. And Atterbury kicks another deep kickoff, and this time, forget about it, out of the end zone. And they'll bring it out to the 20 once again. Well, for Baylor, impressive on their second... Uh, the second drive of the game, their first eight plays, 64 yards, three and a half minutes taken off. And again, they have run the football effectively, John. Uh, they have. They mixed the pass in, though, with John Stanley getting the slant right before the end zone. And both of these teams have scored rather quickly in this football game. There's only 9.32 left in the first quarter. If they keep it up at this pace, uh, we might have to cook some extra turkey for them. They're going to be extra hungry after this game. John Madry, our stats man, going to have to get extra paper here. James Brown at quarterback once again. 9.32 left in the first. Texas operating out of the eye. There goes Eric Jackson to the far side. And to give the Priest Holmes the deep back, it's a cost 20 out to the 23-yard line. Gain of about three. Number 99, Tony Tubbs in on the tackle. Tubbs a guy on defense to all the players. If they were going to vote for a captain, this guy would be it. He is a tough customer. He adds a lot of toughness to this defense. He's a guy that uh, wasn't expected uh, to play that much. Uh, as a matter of fact, his name wasn't even on the board on the depth chart when Bob Cook took over here as defensive coordinator. And uh, he has just worked his way. And now he's the spiritual leader of this football team. Yeah, thinking about getting out of football. Maybe he can manage it or something. Back to throw is Brown. Over the middle, there's his tight end Crawford. And the ball is popped loose and picked up by number... 18, Chris Lewis. Pat Fitzgerald, the tight end, was hit, and the ball was popped out loose by Tony Tubbs, number 99, and there's the man, Chris Lewis, who came up with it. And that's what this Baylor defense does best. That's their 30th takeaway of the season. Ball's thrown to Fitzgerald across the middle, and you can see a great hit inside. The ball's actually stripped out by Tubbs. Chris Lewis gets the ball in the air. Now, they've been able to take advantage of those turnovers. Turnovers this year have led to 109 points scored, Terry. That's an average of about 11 points a game. So this team thrives off creating the turnover and scoring afterwards. So the Bears take over first and 10 at the 35-yard line of Texas. And here's the give inside as Bradford Lewis stops maybe behind the line. He may have lost one. Chris Aikens, the big freshman, in on the stop. Well, that's the way Baylor wins football games. You're right. And they have not put their quarterback, Jeff Watson, in situations where he's going to lose a football game for them. They hope their defense comes up with a big play. They hope Watson can run the offense effectively throughout the game. And that's, that's what got them into their position today, too. The turnover against Rice. They were losing 14-13 in that game. And they created a turnover off their sack. And that uh, gave them the margin of victory in that football game. Jackson in motion to the near side, but to give again. 
Bradford Lewis, and he has stopped after a gain of one. Aikens again in on the stop. Well, Chuck Greedy's team on their first drive broke the all-time Baylor scoring record. 330 points now on the board throughout the year for the Bears. 324 back in 1983 was the old mark. And they're also averaging over 32 points a game, which would break a scoring mark. It's been an odd year, though, offensively. For them. You talk to the coaches, and they say they don't really feel comfortable offensively. Ben Bronson in motion now to the near side. And watching the throw. And Bronson wide open up the near sideline. Inside the 10 to the 5-yard line. Chris Carter, the free safety number 16, made the stop. But another big play to Ben Bronson. And John, again, he was wide open. This is a very similar play to what Texas scored on with their touchdown with Eric Jackson. They bring, bring Bronson across. He's going to run a simple out and up. There you see him going out. Now going back upfield. Watson hits him in stride. And Joey Ellis was locked in coverage. And either got bogged down coming across the middle or simply dropped his coverage. But uh, Ellis was responsible for coverage on Bronson. So a game of 31, and now the Bears inside the five. First and goal, two tight ends in, and whistles blown on the field. And the scoreboard is not working right now. Yeah, the scoreboard is out at this point, and that's what they're going to do. Well, Jackson will come to the near sideline and see if they can get that fixed. I don't think there's eight, what's that, minutes, seconds? What do you want to do with that, Spags? <laughs> the key is that they have the score right. You can tell <laughs> the only light that's left is the seven for Baylor. They kept you the seven up a, for Baylor. It's a home team. stadium, yep. <laughs> well, tonight, Mac is back in a new world premiere movie. Richard Dean Anderson stars as MacGyver in Trail to Doomsday at 8, 7 Central Time. Followed by Primetime Live on ABC. That's tonight. 7-7 seven, seven on Thanksgiving Day. Texas and Baylor hooking up. Of course, normally you have a Texas-Texas A&M matchup, but uh, A&M ineligible for television this year. And you now this is a 10 o'clock start central time. A pregame meal about 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's for, right. for college students, they, they're not used to, to reveling. We uh, stayed at the same hotel with the Texas Longhorns. They look a little sleepy this morning in the lobby. I would hope that uh, Jack Aroot didn't have anything to do with this. I hope he's not responsible. He's down there somewhere. I, I don't know where he is, though. That's Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator for Texas, so he's got a lot of time to think this over. As Baylor's knocking on the door, but first things first, yeah, it looks like we have some power back. Well, Jack went over and took care of it. We saw him down there. Of course, one other game in college football today. That's it. Syracuse and West Virginia. And you can catch that tonight on ESPN at 7.30. But that's the entire slate today on Thanksgiving Day. Well, this is a day traditionally when kids like to go out in the backyard and play some Thanksgiving Day games. Don't you remember the Turkey Day games you used to play as a kid growing up? It was always a part of the whole holiday spirit. Go out, play some football, come back in, have a great dinner, watch some football on television. Nowadays, if I was not here, I would be sitting in the house and eating all day long. That's about <laughs> it. And watching college football. There's Bebo, who is enjoying uh, the game from the far end zone. Along with the Bear from Baylor, they didn't look too chummy before the game. They were around each other, but uh, did not look like they uh, they liked it all that much. Well, we told you that Baylor, with a shot at sharing the Southwest Conference title with a win today, that's what they would do. Of course, an outside chance to go to the Cotton Bowl if Texas Tech would lose to TCU tomorrow in Fort Worth, and uh, John and I will be there. Of course, five teams really conceivably could share that title, and uh, I'm sure every team, every kid on every team would want a championship ring if that would happen. While we have a moment, Jack Root is somewhere on the field. Let's go down to Jack right now. Well, guys, you can see that the ref is speaking upstairs to the timekeeper that actually runs the clock. Now, now some, some actual places, they actually have the timekeeper down here, but they're trying to find out exactly what the time is. 
start and see if it starts like this. If it doesn't, then we'll come back to 712. But you keep the time right down here by the okay. TV guy. We'll keep the time on the okay. field. Okay. You better watch. Uh, okay. Hey, I can't say any more than that. You've got it right there. Jack, nice report. We appreciate that. Well, there are power outages across this area, I am told now. So uh, we may experience this throughout the game. But they're going to keep the time down on the field, as Jack just reported. No shortage of power on either offense today as each team has moved the ball every time they've had it. There's only been three possessions, two touchdowns so far, and Baylor, of course, threatening right here. Baylor with first and goal from the four-yard line. It has been an odd season for Texas. They came in the prohibitive favorite in the Southwest Conference, and they have not played up to those expectations. Well, some prognosticators had expected they would challenge A&M this year. Of course, A&M on probation, but they felt Texas was that good. They felt with A&M out of the way for the Cotton Bowl, because of that probation, they felt Texas would have a clear shot to the title. But uh, along the way, they stumbled. And it started against Rice. Of course, the last-second loss to Colorado hurt them. Then they lost to Rice after that. And then they were blown out by Texas A&M and Texas Tech. And that, that's when people really turned on McAvick. And they have started the clock, but it has not started on the scoreboard. As you see, it is stuck on 7-12. So now here comes Doyle Jackson again over to the near sideline, and they'll try to figure this out again. Awfully hard for Baylor to get in the end zone. I mean, they got down to the four-yard line very quickly, but they've stood around and stood around. It's been a long delay. This is some of the best defense Texas has played all year. <laughs> At least the phones work. Well, getting back to Texas, though, six and four on the year, three and three in the, the Southwest Conference, and I think even John McVick had higher expectations than that coming in. But you mentioned the loss to Rice and had a number of suspensions before that game, players breaking curfew, and since that, I think John feels that he has got the ship back on the water. He, he feels that he's got it back together because of uh, maybe the adversity that was created that think, weekend of the Rice game. I think that's part of it. I think I think sometimes when you go through a crisis uh, collectively, you evaluate yourself and evaluate others around you. And I think in the case of John McVick, that's exactly what happened. And there's a sense here that this team has pulled together. I think the, a win here today would go a long way towards securing that bond that has been created recently between McVick and his players. Understand Jack Root has another report from the field. Jack, what do you have? Well, Terry, I feel like I'm the timekeeper down here. What they've decided is they will keep the time here on the field. So they've asked the scoreboard and it's been extinguished. You won't see 712 up there, but that's where the clock will start. All right, Jack, we, we got it, I think. No time on the scoreboard, so they will keep it on the field. And finally, Baylor comes to the line of scrimmage. First and goal from the four. Ruben and Lewis in the backfield. And to give to Clifton Ruben straight ahead, he may have gotten a yard down to the three. Ruben scored the first touchdown of the game for the Baylor Bears. Well, that's the exact same play they scored on before with Clifton Ruben. Now, uh, same formation, same motion, everything. I'm curious to see if they tried to punch it in, of course, on first down there, but also if they're trying to set something up here. Let's see if they go to play action and move Watson out of the pocket. Well, they'll sometimes go to that stack line, too, where they have three backs in the backfield. Extra blocker in there. This time they split the backs again. It's Ruben and Lewis. And the same motion. And they run the play action, and he throws behind an open receiver in the end zone. And you're absolutely right. That's what they did. They ran the same formation, the same play, but the play action off of it. I think they're trying to go to Damon Ryan. You'll see him lined up number 89. There he is at the left side. He's working through now. He should settle. See, 89, settle right there and give your quarterback a target. Instead, Ryan's ran right into coverage behind Chris Carter, and Watson had nothing to do. You know, Watson is a smart quarterback. He's not going to force it in there, and he just had to throw the football away. See, right there, Ryan doesn't realize he's running into coverage against the zone and the defense like that. Just settle down, and you have yourself a touchdown. Here's the stacked eye with Muhammad in motion. Now settles in the slot on the right side. On the reverse, and here is Muhammad. To the corner of the end zone and a touchdown. Khalif Muhammad with his third touchdown run of the year. 
What a great peel back block by Bruce Nowak, the left tackle, to set that all up. Tony Brackett defensively was the only guy who saw it. Set everything up. Now watch the peel back block. C70 on the left side. Brackett's the only guy that had a shot. Nowak peels back, makes that block. And Muhammad has the speed to get into the end zone. And Brackett never saw him on the ground. So here is Van Dyke on for the extra point. And puts the upright. And offensively, we've got a shootout going on here in Waco today. Here's Bruce Nowak in action. He didn't start today, but he's going to play a lot. And if he keeps blocking like that, he'll play a lot more. Entering the 1974 season, Earl Campbell had led Texas to six Southwest Conference titles. Baylor, on the other hand, was a team that everyone loved to kick around. The Longhorns led 17-0 at half. It was this block punt by Baylor's Johnny Green that turned the tide in Baylor's favor. A few key late interceptions helped put this one away, and Baylor walked away with a 34-24 victory. <laughs> Well, the only thing missing there was the projector whirring in the background. Do you like that? Uh, <laughs> that reminds me how I used to watch film. Well, it's Khalif it Muhammad. He's a happy young man. Baylor leading 14 to 7. 6.25 left in the first quarter. Six plays, 35 yards. The Bears scoring drive. For the third time today, Atterbury. Down to the one, Eric Jackson on the return to the 20, maybe to the 21-yard line, and Texas will start at the 21. Well, Saturday, ABC College football kicks off today at 12 noon Eastern, when number four, Florida, takes on their cross-state rival, number seven, Florida State. Then at 3.30 Eastern, Fred Couples, Payne Stewart, Paul Azinger, and Tom Watson play the Skins game. And live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame tackle the USC Trojans all Saturday here on ABC Sports. And we are told 5.55 left to play in the first quarter now as James Brown back under center. Of course, the scoreboard clock is not working and we'll have to keep you updated on the amount of time left. Eric Jackson in motion and Brown to throw on first down. And Jackson is open at the 30. Eric Jackson tackled by Curtis Jones, number 44, and Chris Lewis. Number 18, Jackson, a guy who's got great speed in this year, having a big year after only two receptions in all of 93. Well, he really stepped up when Mike Adams got hurt earlier the year. He was a re leading receiver, Mike Adams was. But there, Eric Jackson settles in the zone, something you saw Damon Ryan not do earlier for Baylor, and he catches another pass today. So he's off to a good start in this football game. Second and one, and the give to Walker, the deep back, up to the 34-yard line, and so a first down for the Longhorns. Of course, Texas moved the ball very well on the first drive. It was the completion and then a fumble by their tight end, Pat Fitzgerald, that was picked off by Chris Lewis that led to the second Baylor score. So that's 116 points off a of turnover. This is how this football team operates. Very opportunistic uh, defensive team, and the offense has a way of feeding off those turnovers. First down at the 35 for the Longhorn. Long count. You know, coming to your side, this is Roderick Walker. He's wrapped up in the backfield. Number 44, LaCurtis Jones, the top tackler on this team. Only 5'11", 195 pounds, a junior right out of Waco. And there's good blocks at the point of attack. 66 pulls. That's big John Elmore at the point of attack. You can see some blocks are made, but look at the speed as LaCurtis Jones comes from inside out, and he just flashes. What they try and do defensively is scheme things so that he does not get blocked. He can stay unblocked, uncovered, and just go sideline to sideline and make the hits. And that's why he's the leading tackler on this team. Now, he's got to have a heart as big as basketball. This guy is, again, 5'11", under 200 pounds. Second and 14 years, Preet Holmes. Out of the arms of one tackler, but into the arms of about three or four. Jones was there again. But Texas will get a cheap... Uh, First down out of this because Scotty Lewis jumped off sides. He was drawn off by the snap count. Scotty Lewis, we were not sure if he was going to play today. But he is a starter and a very good football player. But watch him at the top. Just steps across into that neutral zone. 
And right then, the ball snapped, and it's too late. So second and four for Texas. They get a first down out of the play. Now, Lewis, a senior out of Sulphur Springs, Texas, has the bad ankle. They got against Rice, and they did not expect him to play today. While we have a moment, let's go down to Jackaroo. Well, we're talking about time again. You know, all teams like to know where the clock is, especially in this first quarter. Well, here's what they're doing on the sideline. They're checking as far as what the time is after each down. They're writing it down and then signaling it in to the team. Kind of reminds me of being at the Indianapolis 500. When the radios go out, use the old blackboard. You know, Jack, when they go to the two-minute drill, you might have to get involved and start racing some times down, too. I'm not a speed rider, guys. <laughs> Second and nine at the 36. Kenny Harrison now in. One of the backs, and there goes James Brown to the outside. And to the 49-yard line, the speed of James Brown allowing him to get out of the pocket and gain another first down for the Longhorns. Gain of 13 on the play, and that is the third time that he has done that today. And as you see, three minutes and 40 <laughs> seconds left at the first. This young man's arms are going to be awful tired by the end of the game. James Brown again on that play. It didn't even look like it was a designed pass. It looked like it was a designed rollout because the receivers weren't in any position to catch a pass. They were running people off downfield, not even looking for the football. It's a good call by John Matthews, who always plays today for Texas. Yeah, took over that job after the last game. He had his offensive coordinator do that throughout the year. Here's a completed pass to the far side, and that is number 81, Pat Fitzgerald. Near another first down, maybe just short. Hendrick Bell, the quarterback of Tyler, Texas, ran him out of bounds. You know what's amazing about James Brown to me is I, I had the opportunity to come down and visit with them and, and watch their practice. Good pass protection up front, and that's always helpful to a football team, but, but Brown is not a good practice football player. There were a lot of balls on the ground when I saw the practice the other day. Comes out here today and he hasn't missed a feet. He's been throwing the ball perfectly every time he's had an opportunity to. It's so hard for a coach to measure that until a guy actually gets a shot to start. And Brown has done that. Straight ahead, there's Ryder McQuarter with a lot of room. And he breaks it to the secondary and into the end zone. Roderick Walker with a 41-yard run, and we are having a shootout in Waco. Now, I'm not sure anybody expected this. No, and there's only been three healthy people for this Texas offense all year, and that's the left side of the offensive line. Watch how they cave people in. And the blitz on the outside allows Walker to come right through. You see Scotty Lewis is unblocked, number 80. But with the speed of Walker, he's able to break his side, cut behind the left side of that offensive line and get into the end zone quite easily. Walker's third touchdown run of the year. And Phil Dawson in for the extra point. You guys had a great year, one of the top young kickers in all of college football. And it is good, and we are tied. So Texas answers once again. We're tied at 14. Later, 14. Texas, 14. Nearing the end of the first quarter, Texas and Baylor all tied. 14-14, Roderick Walker with the long touchdown run. We get the Longhorns back on the scoreboard once again. And the Baylor Bear just wandering today. You know, the Bears, they have to switch those every two years or so. They get too big. They can't, they can't take care of them. Every, everybody should have a new Bear every two years. It's like a car. You lease it for two years, sure. you get another one. Well, now we have dueling scoreboards. Since Texas was riding it on the sidelines, Baylor saw it, and they've got to do it, too. So we'll see if they're in sync throughout this, uh, this whole possession. One team does it. The other one has to come back and do it. And back for Baylor, Deron Douglas, a freshman, and Khalif Muhammad. So Douglas, his first action of the day. Turn off the kickoff. Their special team plays well. And Muhammad, as you know, is a starting tailback. So unlike a lot of people aren't used to carrying the football on kickoff returns, there's a great block on 34, Jermaine Brown. He got knocked down to the ground. Todd Crawford made the block. 
Because Baylor Does takes over the field position. Look at the Texas scoring drive, six plays, 79 yards. But in the backfield now, the freshman. Gerard Douglas, number 22. And the pitch to him. Cuts it back to the 49-yard line. A game of about four feet. Another freshman on defense for Texas makes the stop. Here's a young man, though, who was one of the most highly recruited tailbacks coming out of high school last year. And a big recruiting war between Texas and Baylor. And in the end, he chose to come here to Waco. And part of the reason why uh, I think he, he enjoyed both schools and, uh, and certainly felt uh, very strongly toward Texas, but they run more of an I formation here at Baylor, whereas at Texas they run the uh, split back. And he felt that's something he did at Judson High School, and he'd be more comfortable in this offense. Bradford Lewis straight ahead. Of yeah, they the 52. The 48 of Texas gains a couple on that play. That'll bring up third and about three. Getting back to Douglas, though, he's the number one rusher in Texas 5A football history in high school. In one year alone, Terry, almost had 3,000 yards rushing. 2,967 yards. That was eclipsed the previous mark by over 500 yards. Let's go down to Jack Root and more on Douglas. Well, guys, you were talking about that recruiting war. One of the things that brought Douglas here, in addition, was the fact that Chuck Reedy encouraged his, all of his players to go out for track, and he was a track star. That was an important aspect of it. Third and a long three, maybe four, and over the middle caught, and a first down, number 89, Damon Ryan, to the 41-yard line of Texas. Kyle Richardson, the inside linebacker, made the stop. Ryan's a big target, 6'4", 261. Caught a pass earlier this year, 70-yard touchdown pass, and Chuck Reedy said all of a sudden everybody wanted him playing, throwing the football to him every play. But if you'll recall before, Ryan didn't settle down. Watch how he settles here. He learned a lesson. Somebody advised him that when you're breaking out and you see an opening, settle down, the quarterback will hit you. Lewis and Douglas in the backfield out of the eye now. Watching the throw, the quick out to Ben Bronson, who has it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Haji Allen, number two on the coverage, along with Trey Thomas. But they have been able to hit Ben Bronson a number of times with that quick out to the near side. He has been wide open. Well, they're in sync, at least. So if you're a player and you look at the wrong one, do you worry then? <laughs> I don't know what you do. I would only worry about it before the half or at the end of the game. But Ben Bronson, again, you can see his speed and elusiveness. He tries to split the defenders, which is what all ball carriers have done. First down at the 29, and here is Douglas. Little dance to get back to the line of scrimmage, and he may have gained one. Bracken, number 98 in on the stop. It's kind of interesting that Douglas would carry that kind of ball, because remember we were talking to Jack Crow, and he was saying, you know, we need to get him on the outside more. They tried to run him inside too much, and that's not his strong suit right now, especially in college football with the big jump from high school football for the true freshmen. So, I, I'm surprised they did that. I, I would like to see him get the football more in the perimeter. We can take advantage of his speed and elusiveness. He's not very big. 5'9", 179 pounds. And now Khalif Muhammad in there as well in the stacked off. Watch him. The throw. And wide open is Muhammad. And he leaps into the end zone. Watson to Muhammad for 28 yards and a spectacular finish to the play. Muhammad is emerging as a very good receiver for this football team. He had a 52-yarder against Rice in their last football game. Very similar pattern. Watch him. He's in the middle. Now he's going to go right down the seam on your left side, number one. And I think you get a sense of his athletic ability as he just goes right over Trey Thomas for the touchdown. Trey Thomas 6-1, so he... He had to clear him. Have we had any defense at all? And the extra point is good. Not even, not even close to defense. Every team has scored so far. The five drives, five scores. But Khalif Muhammad lined up in the stack eye. He's already escaped, and it looked like a running formation, but he's able to slip down, get behind the linebackers. You can see Kyle Richardson, 59 in coverage, and look at this exclamation point on that touchdown. Shades of Walter Payton in the old days. Now, Khalif Muhammad with the touchdown catch. Six plays on the drive, 55 yards. And you're right. We have had teams scoring on every drive. Texas, of course, with the one turnover. And that's been the difference to this point. Baylor with the seven-point lead. 
Dr. Root, what do you have down there? Well, fellas you're, look, fellas, you're looking at Jeff Watson, and he's on the headset. Now, we see quarterbacks doing this all the time, but what offensive coordinator Jack Crow does is puts Watson on after every offensive series and goes through a quiz. Ask him what he saw, how he reacted to it, what he thought. And Crow told us yesterday that one of the most impressive things is how quickly he has learned. Remember, he's only a freshman. Crow is very impressed with his quarterback. Well, Jack, of course, Jack Crow, the former head coach at Arkansas, he's been at Auburn and Clemson a number of places. And you're right, in talking to him about Watson, that he really can't believe how far he has come throughout the year and how much he's been able to handle. And another Atterbury kick goes out of the end zone. And Texas will have it once again at their own 20. They have started either at their 20 or 21-yard line every time today. And James Brown comes out with 35 seconds left in the first quarter. How do I know? Because I can look to the sideline. <laughs> the only way. Well, we'll see what Texas counters with. They've so far answered every challenge in this football game with the exception of that one turnover. But to me, Brown in this offense show no time, uh, sign of, of being stopped. Brown is 5 for 5 today for 91 yards and a touchdown. Roderick Walker, the long setback. Steve Bradley, the tight end, now at the end of the line. And Walker to the near side. Across the 25 to the 27, where he is stopped again by the Curtis Jones, who has been awfully active today. Rod Walker was a tailback. Now he's been switched to fullback. They wanted to get their best back in the backfield here in Texas. And you can see why earlier on that touchdown. Well, their backfield has been a little bit unsettled this year, just like Baylor said. They have really switched guys around it. Wanted to play Walker and Holmes together. They've done that a number of times. Earl Wilson as well. So there goes the first quarter gun. And they will go down to the other side of the field. All offense so far in Waco. As we start the second quarter here at Floyd Casey Stadium, we've had 34 plays from scrimmage, 35 points on the board, and it does look like the board is working now. But we'll wait and see. Yeah, they keep racking up points like this. They'll break it on the uh, not on the time side, but uh, we'll have to get to 99 and 100. I don't think the thing goes to 100. So if you're a head coach, are you happy or displeased right now? I mean, you got to be unhappy with the way your defense is performed on either side of the football, but the offenses have been great. Well, James Brown, five out of five in this game. And it's two games prior that he had started almost 80%. Second is three, and that didn't look good from the start. That looked like the right side of the offensive line started a little early. You could see that they were going to go to an option play. It's something that Brown gives this offense that uh, John Makovic does not normally run with Shane Moran. That was John Dutton, number 14, who's signaling in plays next to Makovic. Now, you mentioned Shea Moran. And the normal start, starting quarterback for Texas had a great year last year in his redshirt freshman year, record-setting year. A little bit banged up with a knee and a shoulder. James Brown doing a terrific job. There he is. Scrambling again, and Lavelle picked to the intended receiver. He just couldn't get there. Brown tried to throw it up in the air and let him go after it. And so for the first time today, we've had a team go three and out. Texas loaded one side of the formation, and of course Brown rolled out to there, came back, tried to make a play to Pinckney, and wasn't able to feather the football in there. So Ben Bronson, the wideout, back deep for Baylor. And Wayne Bostic will hunt for the Longhorn. bit of pressure but he gets it away and a good kick and Bronson calls for the fair catch right at the 35 yard line so for the first time a defense is held we'll see what happens when we come back welcome back to Waco Texas Terry Gannon John Spagnola and Jack Arup and take a look at 
what took place in the first quarter, John? Well, it's pretty interesting. Texas with a balanced attack, 178 yards. They get it almost evenly through the air and on the ground, but Baylor definitely heavy on the pass side, 123 yards, the one turnover down at the bottom there. The key to the difference in this football game so far. First down at the 36, and the pitch to the tailback, that's Douglas. Across midfield, into Texas territory at the 48, Chris Aiken, the true freshman on defense, finally ran him down, but there's a look at the speed outside of Gerard Douglas. And that's what I meant earlier. This is where he's more comfortable, at least right now, he'll develop to be a good inside runner. But you can understand why they are so excited and why this, this kid was the, the hottest recruit in Texas last year coming out of high school. The speed, the vision, the ability to cut back without slowing down, that's all part of the complete package for Gerard Douglas. Eight of 17 on that play, so first and 10 at the 47 of Texas, and the play action for Watson. Over the middle, and Bronson in and out of his arms, and they rule it incomplete. He really made a nice adjustment on that ball. It was behind him. Once he came back, had it for a moment, but he got popped by Chris Carter, the free safety, number 16, and dropped it. And it was a bit of a dangerous throw, too. Watson, of course, doesn't turn the ball over that much, but when you throw against the field, across your body, you can't get a lot on the football. You can see Carter driving that football, and he does knock it loose, and it is a complete and accurate call. But, of course, Carter almost had an opportunity to cut inside and make an interception there. Second and 10 at the 47 now. Watson looking for someone and almost does get out of the pocket. He's tripped up though. Norman Watkins was there along with Tony Bracken. And he gets ahead to the 40, about the 44 yard line. Well, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, ABC Sports presents regional college football action, except for our West Coast viewers, as NC State takes on number 13, Virginia. John and I will go up the road to Fort Worth and watch Texas Tech and TCU. Then at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific, number one Nebraska faces Oklahoma in a national showdown, followed on the West Coast only by a Pac-10 matchup at three Pacific, Arizona State and Arizona. Third and seven at the 44. And there is a catch by the tight end number 89, David Ryan. And near a first down, we'll have to wait for the measurement. Big hit by Joey Ellis as he comes in. He gets away almost 100 pounds to Damon Ryan, but he is fearless. He close quickly on that throwback, and it looks to me like uh, Baylor's going to be short of the first down. We'll take a look at it. Well, as they come on to measure, remember, it's not only a huge game for Baylor today because they could share in the Southwest Conference title, but if they would win today over Texas, and Texas Tech would lose tomorrow to TCU in the game that we're doing on ABC, Baylor would go to the Cotton Bowl. This is a, a, in lieu of the chain, they have a new way of setting up the down and distance marker. And they set it up at the yard line ahead, and then use this stick to come down, and if it's in that reddish area there, whatever that area is, that's the first down area but uh, looks a whole lot more complicated to me than the chain <laughs> I, I think we'll stick with the chain I've, ne I've never seen that one wow of course they are short so it's fourth and inches Clifton Rubin over the top stop and fights his way I think he got there anyway Joey Ellis, the cornerback, came up to hit him, but Chuck Reedy's team with the first down as he goes on fourth down. Yeah, there's no question he made the first down. Good blocking up front. Marty Dunbar, an unheralded center, fifth-year center, gets a good surge at the point of attack, and you can see how easily Ruben gets the inches he needed for the first down. Same play that they scored the first touchdown on. They bring the in motion and Use him as a lead blocker. So first down at the 36. Lewis and Douglas in the backfield. Watson the throw over the middle. And had a man wide open, but the big arms of number 59, Kyle Richardson, stopped the pass in midair. Another true freshman, Kyle Richardson, forced into service because there's been nine different 
linebacker combinations here. And again, the play is wide open. Watson trying to go to John Stanley, and he is open because of the play action. And Richardson just makes a great athletic play. Yeah, but maybe one of those passes where a freshman has to learn to put a little air underneath the ball, get it over the linebacker. Tell you the truth, he's reading coverage. I don't even think he saw Richardson in his vision. I mean, it wasn't as if he had to float it over somebody at the line of scrimmage. Farther downfield, yes, he would put some air under. Second and ten, Gerard Douglas, but wrapped up by number 96, Chris Aikens, who's had a big game so far today. He's been on a number of tackles. An active nose guard, only a freshman out of Paris, Texas. That'll bring up third and about six at the 32-yard line. And Baylor ready to pick cotton. Again, a win today and a loss by Texas Tech would send Baylor to the Cotton Bowl. First time since 1981. You think Spike Dykes is home watching this game at Texas Tech? I know Baylor loses there. today. He might have a little extra helping of mashed potatoes. Absolutely. The screen to Muhammad. And hit at the 34-yard line. Number 59, Kyle Richardson, another big play after batting down the first down pass. There's a guy that Gary Darnell never thought he'd play this year because he was a true freshman, pressed into service because of the injuries. But he comes in and reads the screenplay very well and makes a good hit on Muhammad. Muhammad's been spending a lot of time in the air today, hasn't he? Richardson's father, a high school coach, and uh, he's learned well. Back in a moment. Welcome back to Waco, Texas. The Baylor Bears driving once again, and they've been up in the air quite a bit today. 21 points on the board for Baylor, and they lead 21 14. Don't forget, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. The 24th year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Fourth and seven, and here come the Bears. They're going for it. Watson in trouble. And through the arms of number 32, Bradford Lewis. And he would have been close to a first down. Actually, I think Kyle Richardson tipped that ball on its way to Bradford Lewis. Good play again by Richardson, who's very active in pass coverage today. On this drive, Richardson then has tipped two passes and also made a huge hit. Gary Darnell pleased with his defense. The one thing, though, is that the play action fake, I don't think, affected this defense at all. With fourth and seven, the threat of running the football is not going to be that effective. And you can see Richardson on the tip. Pressure coming from Norman Watkins on the outside on Jeff Watson as he threw the football. Yeah, never bought the play fake. So Texas taking over at the own 33-yard line. And Brown back to throw. Got a man open at midfield and caught. Number 39, Curtis Jackson with the catch and into Baylor territory. And James Brown has been right on the money today. Yeah, that was a good reception. On an in pattern coming across the middle, one player, player cleared out. Curtis Jackson comes back inside. You can see that was Eric Jackson. Number nine clearing out, and that allows Curtis Jackson to come underneath and make the catch. So James Brown continuing to operate this offense at a high efficiency. First down inside Baylor territory at the 48. And here is Holmes, who's not number one tackler, and gets inside the 45 to the 44, the Curtis Jones, number 44, whose name has been called all day long on defense. He's a guy who's 5'11", about 190, 95 pounds. But he will not back away. There's the Curtis Jones again. Let's see if anybody gets a lick on him. No. Dan Neal, the center, tries to get a piece of him. He's too quick. I mean, you don't see linebackers do that. Come underneath so close to the line of scrimmage and come around and still make a play. But that's the speed and quickness of LaCurtis Jones. Neal was there. He just couldn't catch it. Second and six at the 44. He dropped for Brown. Jackson almost picked off after the ball was tipped up into the air. Chris Lewis and Kendrick Bell on the cover. That ball hung a little bit in the air, allowed Chris Lewis, who's a fine free safety, a, a three-year starter, to break on the football. See Jackson come across the middle. Now the free safety's just playing middle field. He sees the football. It floats in the air. You see how Jackson has to slow down to make an adjustment on the football, and that allows Chris Lewis to undercut him. 
It's only the first pass we've seen Brown throw poorly today. Now he's been right on target that all day so far. Brings up third down for the Longhorns at the 44. Third and about six as they split the back. Wide open is Eric Jackson again, and at the 32-yard line, he's got a first down. Tyrone Smith, number nine on the coverage, but they just gave him too much room again. Tyrone Smith is a good cornerback. He's working one-on-one -on -one with Eric Jackson, who at this point of the season is very comfortable in the things he's trying to do. A little swim move to get back outside and take away that outside position that Tyrone Smith had. And that's what created the lane for the quarterback. Now, you have to respect the speed of Jackson, too. He's their number one deep threat. He is 12 on the play. And Roderick Walker, the long step back. Jackson in motion to the near side and the play action. Brown throwing and has Jimmy Hayes on the far sideline, out of bounds at the 19. Tyrone uh, Smith again on the coverage, but the big tight end Jimmy Hakes with his first catch of the day is eighth on the year. And again, Texas continues to move the football. Watch the effect that the misdirection has on 58. Glenn Coy on the left side. He's thinking ball carry. Now he realizes the quarterback has the football. James Brown had some room to run, too. Instead, he gets the ball off to Hakes for the first down. It's got to be awfully tough with the speed of James Brown, too, on a play like that when he rolls out. The defensive back, do you come up, do you stay in coverage, what do you do? That takes the sting out of your pass rush, too. You have to stay in your lanes and be disciplined on your pass rushing. Kenny Harris is number 36 now in, in the backfield for longer. And Brown falls down and tries to get it away and actually completes the pass, but they're going to rule him dead. What an athletic throw. I mean, it's not going to count, but you've got to be kidding me. So pretty good arm strength. That, that would be complete in the pros. Of course, in football, if your knee or your fanny or anything else touches the ground, you're, you're down. I mean, I'm not sure how he saw him. He's laying on the ground, and he completes the pass to Jackson. And Jackson a little bit shaken up, squeezing the right hand. Take a look. How's that for arm strength? The center, oh. Dan Neal, steps on him. You can see his right foot trip him up, but uh, that's a pretty strong gun he has. Lots of fourth, a second and fourth defense. And there goes Roderick Walker. He's got room to the 15-yard line. Kendrick Bell, number 11, made the stop. They like their cornerbacks here at Baylor. They, they like their secondary. But Kendrick Bell, a guy who's very tough, physical. Roderick Walker. Number one rusher on the year for Texas. Let's watch how that line went. Again, the center, Dan Neal, makes a great block. Number 69 throws his player to the ground to create that seam for Bell. I mean, for Walker. Another key third down for the Longhorn. They need to go about five. Maybe six. The tight end hits inside the 10. It stops right near the first down marker, Adrian Robinson with a big time hit. We'll see where they spot it, but what a stop by Robinson. Jimmy Hakes came into this game with only seven receptions. He's had a couple on this drive alone right here. The senior doesn't play a whole lot, but he's got some very good hands. You'll see Jimmy Hakes where he lines up right at the tight end position here. Just hold it, and now he breaks out into the flat. And we have driving from Adrian Robinson who comes right in and makes the hit. Well, they moved the chains on the first down, but Robinson with a big time play to try to stop Hakes. Just inside the 10. Walker straight ahead inside the 5 to the 3. Tony Tubbs and the Curtis Jones and the stop, but you look at the Texas offense right now, they're really mixing it up. It's been a balanced offense. Off of the play fake, James Brown on the money throughout the day, and the back's doing a nice job as well. And they come into this game pass heavy. I mean, they're second in passing yeah. in the Southwest Conference, they're second last in rushing, but so far today, they've had a very good mix of run and pass. Roderick Walker, six rushes for 66 yards so far. And they go from the three, here's Walker again. Down near the goal line, a little extracurricular after the play. Glenn Coy. Got to get to it with one of the Longhorns. So inside the one. It is spotted on 
third down for Baylor. Excuse me, Texas. They get Baker behind their big center, Dan Neal, left side of their offensive line, where they like to run in here. Straight ahead, and that is the deep back, Daryl Wilson, who just came into the game. Touchdown, Texas. Wilson, a freshman out of Dallas, was his fourth touchdown on the ground of the year. And John McAvick's team comes back again. Big Blake Brockermeyer, a left tackle. See him coming right out on the left side, looking to push. He gets, along with Pat Fitzgerald, number 81, who blocks down effectively. There again, Pat Fitzgerald, good lead block by Chad Lucas. Very good execution all around for that touchdown play. Earl Wilson had a broken arm early in the year. Right halfway through this year, really starting to play more and play well for Texas. And Dawson's point after is up, and it is good. So Texas comes back with another score, 649 left in the first half, and it has been offense, 21-21. Next Saturday, a trip to the USF and G Insurance Sugar Bowl is on the line as number three Alabama collides with fourth-ranked Florida in the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. Live from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Next Saturday here on ABC's College Football. Ought to be a good one. Tough game back-to-back -to -back for Florida. Oh. Coming off a Florida State game. It's a lot to ask at the end of the season. They got to love what Alabama has been able to do, too, and if they should win out, they would get my vote. Dawson kicks it off once again. And at the seven yard line is Mohammed back across the 20, maybe to the 24 or 25 yard line. And let's go downstairs for an injury report from Jack Aroot. Well, guys, that scoring drive by the Texas Longhorns was a costly one. Eric Jackson, number nine, the wide receiver that was so great in that drive, he's had to come off, and the Medicos have been working on his right elbow. They say he hasn't severely. Well, they said a severely bruised right elbow. They're continuing to check him. They've tentatively cleared him to go back and play. But, you know, sometimes an injury like that can just take the edge off of things. Well, Jack, you know, this is a, a hard turf. There are actually patches on this turf which are worn all the way down to the, the rubber bottom. So you, you take a hit with an elbow on this thing, and that's what's going to happen. But he is key to their offense. Baylor starts at its own 25-yard line. Here's the freshman, Gerard Douglas, straight ahead for three, maybe three and a half. Robert Reed, number 40, in on the stop. Reed, a junior out of Converse, Texas. He and White Kirkpatrick to share that weak side linebacker spot. You know, uh, in talking to Chuck Reed, he, well, he asked him why he didn't play Gerard Douglas against Rice in the last game. He said, you know, I looked over to him 10 times, but it was such a close game, a tight game. He said, I just couldn't pull the trigger and get the freshman in there. It's tough to put a freshman in there. You're right. <laughs> Out of the eye again, and Watson checking off at the line of scrimmage on second and six. Ooh. Almost caught from behind, and the ball on the ground now. Number 40, Robert Reed there to make the tackle, but Brandel Jackson lost the ball and very fortunate to get it back. Norman Watkins, number one, the man who was chasing Jeff Watson and maybe caused the tough pitch. It was a big hit on Watson. From Watkins, number one, you can see he comes in actually from behind and pulls him down. The pitch was good, but Brandel Jackson has not been in the game all that much. Khalif Muhammad has played. Gerard Douglas has played, and we haven't seen Jackson that much handling the football. Now you're right, Watkins on the pressure. Wasn't a bad pitch, though. Third down and six at the 29. One of the shotgun is Watson. Over the middle, and there's his tight end again, Damon Ryan. And he has a first down at the 37-yard line. Now Richardson, number 59, on the coverage in the stop. But they have gone to lines quite a bit today. I'm surprised they have, and I think it's a good, good thing they are offensively. When you have a target like that, uh, he can get open in the middle of the football field and allows other things to happen in this offense. And again, there's Jack Crow. Who, you know, some people say they script plays and they try and give you this illusion that everything's so organized. He says, I peck, peck, peck until I see something work. <laughs> Throw it against the wall. If it's six, we'll keep going with it. And flags everywhere as Stanley came in motion to the near side. And we'll have to sort it out. Yeah, they, they really have. It, it's an offense 
that is really a record-setting offense in terms of Baylor football, the point score. They set the all-time record today. And you see Baylor with the illegal procedure, and they'll be backed up. But they're still searching for some kind of continuity in this offense. John Stanley, number 14, comes in most, just turns up a little too soon. Ah, he caught himself, but that was too late. That got the flag. It's got to be a bad feeling, too, you know? Not a whole lot you can do. No, there is. It's worse when you're a big offensive tackle and you start to lean forward, though, because you really can't <laughs> stop yourself in that situation. <laughs> but backs him up first now in 15 at the 33. And this is the deep back Mohammed across the 35 to the 38. Khalif Mohammed, a sophomore out of Hollis, Texas. David Davis, this is an OT, watch 79, the big tackle come around and make a block, a little misdirection play, now watch 79, he seals his man inside, allows Muhammad to get a little bit more room, a good block by the sophomore, 304 pounder, they like this guy, they liken him to Steve Wallace, who plays for mm -hmm. Jack Rowe, because he's got all the tools, and it's a sophomore out of Dallas, watching the throw, looks off the cover, just falls in the air, and picked off, at the 45-yard line, I believe that's number 59, Kyle Richardson. And if it is, what a huge first half he has had. Well, he's been batting footballs around all day. It's nice to see him be the beneficiary of somebody else batting the football. Watson rolls out, tries to get the football back across the gray. Let's see who gets a big ball on it. Wait, Thomas Baskin, perhaps. Yes, it was. And Richardson comes up with it, so the big turnover, similar play started the first drive by Baylor. There you see big number 90. Thomas Passman get his hand up. Plus is trying to go across the field on the misdirection. And it's a turnover. So now the turnover is even out. There's Thomas Baskin, the defensive tackle, who tipped that ball. But a senior out of Riverside, California. And a strong, strong man. They say he came here as a tight end and he ate his way over to the defensive line. What a way to do it. <laughs> 4 3 left. Deep. He has as a man. Lavelle Pinkney at the goal line and a touchdown. Lavelle Pinkney, 6'5", 245, and a big target for James Brown. The pump fake and Pinkney with his seventh touchdown catch of the year. Watch the pump fake. Good protection up front. A little hesitation inside. Now Pinkney takes it downfield. Chris Lewis, the free safety, has him. Realize he jumped the pattern underneath. And again, two games back to back. The Texas has scored on this kind of football play. They did the same thing against Houston in their last game. Lavelle Pinckney with his seventh touchdown catch of the year, his 15th in his career. That is a new Texas record. And Dawson on for the extra point. And it is good. There is a flag, though, for the play, and we'll see what that's all about. You look at the belt picking, celebrating on the sideline. It looks like they have rushing the radio. Yeah. Rocker the 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 Myers, the captain, so he's talking things over with the official, and it looks like that'll probably be assessed on the kickoff. Take a look, Dawson, and it comes from the far side. And he did run into him. Is that Adrian Robinson? I don't, I don't know who's got him, but uh, I believe it was number four, Joe Maynard. Joe Maynard who got him. But Lavelle Pinkney, we talked about it, 15 catches for touchdown in his career, and that breaks a Texas record. Johnny Lamb Jones, who held that with 14 touchdown catches. And Pinkney now with 15. Pinkney, one of those guys who's an odd receiver. I mean, he's got the great size, and you can throw the ball up in the air. Pretty good speed. And a lot of people say he should play in the NFL. And there's Johnny Lamb Jones. The late 70s and a big-time player for the Longhorn. Yes, he was. But getting back to Pinkney, he's the kind of guy who will probably look, be projected as a wide receiver, slot-type guy, maybe a motion tight end. He's just a, he's a big target. I don't know if he's physical enough 
to play tight end. I don't know if he's had enough experience blocking. Does he have the speed to play wide out? Oh, he, he certainly does. does. He ran something like a 4 3 8 40 back in the spring. He was a couple pounds lighter at the time, but he definitely has the speed. He doesn't quite have the quickness that you want out of a wide receiver, but you get a sense of the kind of target he is downfield. He's an imposing guy to throw the football and an imposing guy to, to have to pass defense. They say he goes about 245. i got to believe he's more than that by this point in the season. Well, Dawson to kick off once again. 28 to 21 with 3 minutes and 55 seconds left in the first half. Khalif Muhammad and Gerard Douglas back deep for Baylor. This one out of the end zone. And Baylor will take over at its own 20-yard line. And don't forget, coming up at the half, the Prudential Halftime Report. Which updated on all the happenings this weekend and some other features that we will bring you. John Makovic very happy about the way things have gone in the last seven minutes or so. His team was down 21 to 14, two quick scores. That is correct. We are still in the second quarter. <laughs> You're just tuning in. Baylor trying to get to the Cotton Bowl. They need some help from Texas Tech, but they got a win today. Trying to get a share of the Southwest Conference title as well. And Douglas, the freshman, wrapped up in the backfield. Number one, Norman Watkins. And Watkins is still down on the turf. He's getting helped up. He's got his mouthpiece down on the ground there. He just stepped on. I think he's telling somebody to go help him pick it up. But I'm really impressed with Watkins. I think he has excellent speed. And he's come on and played exceptionally well for this football team down the stretch. It looks like he gets his arm caught. Or he seemed to be somewhere in pain. It looks like his right arm is what's bothering him. It may, it may have torqued around as he was making that tackle. It's not that cold right now. It's probably about 55 degrees or so and warming up to about 60. As we started, it was very chilly and windy. But what about the turf on a day when it's very chilly early in the morning? You look at, yeah, that, you know what happened? He hyperextended his arm. It got caught in the helmet, and it just snapped as the ball carrier went down to the ground. So Zach Arun will be reporting on another elbow getting passed up on the sideline. Uh -huh. Second and 13 now for the Baylor Bears. <laughs> a long count for Watson. Run the option. Going nowhere. Wrapped up, Robert Reed stood him up and would not let him out of his grasp. What a play by Reed. Texas again are starting to step up their defense. They're playing a lot better defensively now. They've made some adjustments. Watson going down the line of scrimmage, and he sees the Texas defender flash toward the running back, so he tries to hold on to the football. It's a great play by Robert Reed. Third down coming up for Baylor. Texas calls timeout with the hopes of getting the ball back before halftime. We'll be back. Good news, gentlemen, on the condition of Norman Watkins. He didn't hyperextend his elbow. What he actually did is he took his arm, as you showed on the replay, and it pushed all the way back and hyperextended his shoulder. But the doctors have looked it over and said he's cleared to go back and fly. Jack, thank you. A big third down coming up for Baylor here after the Texas timeout. Third and about 14 from the 16-yard line. Watkins left side of the pocket and down at the five. The ball is loose, but the whistle has been blown. Big Thomas Baskin in on the sack. Well, you've seen the Texas defense come up big twice now. A fourth down situation earlier where they registered a sack. And here they also register a sack against Watson, actually before they had batted the pass down. But the point is, they're bringing the pressure up front. Watson does not have an opportunity to make too many choices with the football. And finally, Baskin comes from backside and makes the sack. What a huge play, too, because after the timeout, Texas now will not only get the ball back, but they'll force Baylor to try to kick it out of their own end zone. And this young man has been on the run throughout the afternoon. It's played well, but uh, you're right. They have applied a lot of pressure defensively. Not a bad scheme against the young quarterback. Baylor's bogged down here a little bit. Texas is uh, playing a lot better defense. And with 2.47 left now in the first half, Texas should enjoy good field position. Baylor will have to punt into the wind. They should expect to get the football in Baylor territory with a decent return. Well, John McAvick's team was down by a touchdown, 21 to 14. A scoring drive, and then they got a break. The interception on the tip pass. 
And they took that after a series of plays in for a score and lead by seven. And Chris Carter is back to receive for the Longhorn. And he is at about the 43-yard line of Baylor. And Ty Atterbury to punt for the first time this afternoon. He's about seven yards deep in his own end zone. Good snap, and he gets it underway. And here comes Carter to field this one at the 33-yard line. So Texas with great field position. And two minutes and 41 seconds left in this first half. And let's go down to the field, check in with Jack Aroot. Terry, back on October 1st, when the Texas Longhorns were playing Colorado, Coach John McEvick had a close encounter. As Tony Brackens was trying to chase down Rasham Salam, bang, right into his coach. Required stitches, but more importantly, Coach McEvick suffered from a concussion. Just two weeks ago, he announced to the media around Austin that he suffered from post-concussion syndrome, and only about 14 days ago did he say he began to feel like himself again. Jack, a very serious imp I mean, a lot of people have made light of that. Talking about the months that John was, was out of it, but very serious and uh, glad to have him back. He said he feels well now. Here's Brown to the outside with room to the 23-yard line, and I believe has a first down for the Longhorn. Again, the scrambling ability of James Brown and a big gain for Texas. Pat Fitzgerald is in the pattern, number 81. Now watch what he does. He, he tries to set. Now he goes downfield. He's starting to get open a little bit. But this is great play by Fitzgerald. Look at that. As soon as he realizes Brown is committed to the rest, look at the block he makes. Just a terrific block, setting up some more room for James Brown. They move the chains now at the 23-yard line. Walker, the lone setback, but James Brown the throw. Has a man, that's Curtis Jackson, the far side at the 14-yard line. So another good game for the Longhorns is they get about nine on the play. Again, what I like about James Brown is he's making quick decisions, whether he's running or throwing the football. There he planted his back foot. It wasn't the best pass in the world, but Curtis Jackson makes an effortless adjustment to the football to make the reception. So Brown, Maynard, again, is either deciding to throw or run, and he's doing it without any hesitation at all. Very quickly, Joe Maynard gave him a lot of room. On the outside, Curtis Jackson with a nine-yard catch. Second and one at the 14, Roger Walker straight ahead. And may have got that one, but it's going to be very close. Sheldon Mallory, a redshirt freshman out of Amarillo. 96, stopped him there. Mallory playing. He's usually third on the depth chart, but I think these Baylor defenders have been doing a lot of chasing today, and they're rotating as many people as they can through the defensive line. Now, don't forget, Texas with a chance a chance to share the Southwest Conference title as well. Where things would have to happen, but they're playing for that today as well. They're down in one. Rod Walker again deep in the back. He gets it to the left side looking for room. Straight ahead and met near the line of scrims. I'm not sure he got there. Adrian Robinson, number seven, along with Tony Dubbs, number 99, drove him back. Adrian Robinson. Rod Walker had an opportunity perhaps to turn it upfield right inside the hole, right inside those two blocks. But he tries to go outside and all of a sudden the Baylor defense comes in and makes a good hit on him. First of all, it's kind of an interesting call, a misdirection when you need less than a yard to go. And secondly, he had an opportunity to turn it up perhaps inside and did not. Thirdly, I still haven't quite figured out the <laughs> yard thing. I, I was gonna let you handle that one, partner. All I know is the official raised his arms and they've got about a foot to go. Let's see if he had a chance right there underneath the, the guard block. I think uh, right there, Justin Still, number 30, does a terrific job taking on the lead blocker and forcing Walker to take it outside. You're right, he had a little bit of room on that. He closed quickly. That's not where that hole normally breaks, but a good back to see that with vision and make that cut appropriately. Bill Dawson, 14 out of 18 on the year, and this one a 30-yard attempt. High snap, spotted down, and the kick is no good. And you may blame the snap on that. Well, Dawson's over. He, he thinks he hit it. He thinks he made a good field goal. Chad Lucas on the hold. It was a high snap to center. 
John Elmore is usually the short snapper, number 66. See the, the snap, and actually Lucas has a little problem bringing it down, actually. Oh. And that's what uh, pushed that ball to the right. Actually, Ryan Feeberg was the uh, center here. Feeberg is the center. He snaps it. You see Lucas has problems bringing it down. There's the kick. Tell you what, that is awfully close. And it looks like it may have gone right over that upright. He thought it was good. He was very upset. And not only did they not get the three points, but you talk about momentum heading to the locker room. 35 seconds left in the first. And they could have taken that with them, and now it's Baylor. Here's Khalif Mohammed straight ahead for a couple. They'll run it out, I do believe, at the end of the first half. But a big play, I believe. You know, you go to the locker room, if you're Baylor, you say, all right, we're a touchdown down. But after the interception, after kicking out of our own end zone, very fortunate not to give up the field goal. Oh, absolutely. And the naysayers of Makovic will, of course, charge that he shouldn't have run a misdirection play and, you know, the field goal. And this is the kind of way it's been for Texas this year as the head coach. Every decision he makes gets second guess. You know what? Winning cures all of that. Coming up, the Prudential Halftime Report. 28 to 21 Texas at halftime. Prudential, peace of mind. It comes with every piece of the rock. Back at Boy Casey Stadium, Terry Gannon along with John Spagnola and Jack Root. Texas leading by a touchdown. And done a lot of highlights in this first half. The first quarter especially was incredible. Both offenses on the field at one point. There were 34 plays from scrimmage, 35 points on the board. They both moved the football very effectively, but I thought Texas got a little momentum going into halftime with some good defensive stance. They had an opportunity for a field goal, and they missed it right before halftime. Well, the score was tied 14-all when Baylor drove down the field and watched Khalif Muhammad, number one, come into your screen right in the seat with a nice catch but even more spectacularly the leap into the end zone for the touchdown to make it after the extra point 21 to 14 baylor and mohammed with a high hurdle to score and then texas came back lavelle pinckney the big target 6 5 245 pounds and after the pump fake from james brown beats the secondary deep and catches his 15th touchdown catch of his career, a Longhorn record. And moments away from the second half, let's go down to the field, check in with Jack Arood, who has Chuck Reedy. Jack? Well, Coach, you dodged a bullet there at the final moments of the first half with that missed field goal. Yeah, we sure did. I'll tell you what, we haven't got any pressure on the quarterback, and we haven't covered them. That's a bad combination. Any changes in the defense? Well, we just got to settle down. I think everybody's out there trying to do somebody else's job instead of playing their own responsibility. And we're going to have to blitz them in a little bit. we got to get some pressure on the quarterback. Gentlemen. All right, Archie. Jack. We'll see if they can get it done. Moments away from the second half kick. Come back right after this. Well, I am sure most of the talk in the locker rooms at halftime centered around defense, as in trying to find some defense. Neither team has been very effective in the first half. Baylor won the coin toss, but deferred to the second half. That's the reason. A stiff wind blowing right to left out of the southeast. And it's about 15 miles an hour. It looks different than that right now. That's when we kicked off. But so it definitely has had an effect. In fact, every kickoff so far has not been returned going in this direction. Douglas and Khalif Muhammad deep. It'll be Muhammad at his own four after the bobble. Across the 20. And has room. And has a shot to go. A foot race down the far sideline. Touchdown, Baylor. But there is a flag back at the 20-yard line. There's a flag thrown on the far side of the field at the 20-yard line of Baylor. And it looks like this one is coming back. Yeah, this one is coming back. Still doesn't do anything to, in any way, put down the terrific effort by Muhammad. Interestingly enough, how many times have you seen it when a ball is bobbled a little bit? It seems like the coverage team has a way of getting out of its lane, getting out of its discipline, yeah, and breaking down and not covering correctly. Ben Bronson, his mate, who receives 
kicks. Ran it back 98 yards against USC for a touchdown earlier this year. Muhammad runs it back 96 yards, but all for naught. And it's a legal block in the back. So a great view. We'll look at the patience of Muhammad. And we'll see if we can see the block in the back right here. And that is what the referee was looking at. Right there, we'll see the little push in the back. It doesn't have to be all that much, but that's all it takes to get called. What I was impressed with, though, is Muhammad's patience. Right, I mean, when you have 22 people or 21 people flying around, he, he took his time, picked his way, and, of course, burst it down the sideline, but it all comes back on that block in the back. Yeah, it wasn't like he darted through. He kind of used his patience. There's Robert Crenshaw, who was injured on the kickoff return for Texas. Watson in motion to the far side. And the gift to Brandel Jackson in the backfield, and he is wrapped up in the backfield. Tony Brackens, number 98. Last year's Southwest Conference defensive newcomer of the year, and you look at what Baylor did in the first half of their possession. Sure, and then uh, the touchdowns, and then they got bogged down on downs, and then they had the turnover, and at that point, Texas started to seize control of this football game, and now you have another down there here in the second half. They take the opening kickoff back in the second half, and it gets called back. So Texas, I think, with the win, needs to take advantage of this and put uh, Baylor further behind once they get the football. Second and a long nine. Rolling out his watch and now looking back across the field. And he throws low. The intended receiver, Ben Bronson, who had gone in motion. And I think Baylor seems a little bit out of sync with their offense right now. And we take a look at what took place throughout the first half, John. Well, if you recall, the stats were very even going into the second quarter. But Texas now taking the lead in this football game and taking the lead statistically. Moving the football, passing a little bit more than they did earlier. Baylor still relying on the pass too much, and they'll have to throw on this play. But the turnovers are even now, and the difference in this football game is seven points. So both teams capitalizing off the turnover. Yep, both big plays that led the score. Third and nine. And they give to the up back, that is Bradford Lewis. From the 25 to the 26, Thomas Baskin, number 90, and number 50, Tyson King. In on the stop, and Baylor will have to put it away. Diannaberry is going to have his work cut out for him here. Running into the wind. You remember right before the half, he couldn't even get it to the 40-yard line, and he's punting from a similar position. Now, he was in his end zone the last time, but now he's right about his two-yard that's two yard line. Chris Carter deep for the Longhorns. And I would imagine they definitely will get this in Baylor territory. Not much pressure, end over end punt. Back to the 37 yard line. So Texas with great field position. 23 yard punt, no return. Back here in Waco, Texas. When Lavelle Pinckney came out at halftime, I had a chance to talk to him before he went on the field. And I asked him what Coach John Makovic had to say. He said, You know, all week we had real, real tough, gut busting practices. And Coach Makovic reminded us at halftime that the seven point lead that we had over the Baylor Bears was on account of those tough practices. He said, gentlemen, don't let up, keep the heat on, and we can come home a winner today. Well, Jack, great field position for Texas again. Their last three drives started in Baylor territory. They've gotten a touchdown and a missed field goal off of those drives. Round the throw and a lot of time. Heaves it up <laughs> and no one there. He threw that thing away. There was no one home. I think we got a sense of what Chuck Reedy was talking about. And here Brown got the chance to look left side, right side, all over the football field. Excellent protection up front by this Texas Longhorn offensive line. Watch out, Brown scans all the way to his left. Nobody's open, and all the uh, pass rushers are there in the middle. You have five on three in the middle, and he throws it away. My only suggestion to him would be to find a different spot to throw the football away. Down the middle, long. It's not a place where you want to throw the football away. I tell you, he had time to eat the mashed potatoes, the stuffing, the uh, drumstick, everything that time, though. A lot of time in a coverage play. Up top again. Now on the far sideline is Pinckney. And overthrown and out of bounds. The coverage. Down there by number nine, Tyrone Smith. I think Brown just threw that football away. He knew it was covered by Tyrone Smith. 
Texas in their first half possessions, they scored, then they fumbled. Baylor capitalized on that. They had a touchdown, but then they created a turnover and got some more touchdowns. And as you can see, this, this team, with the exception of one punt and a fumble, has moved the football every time they've had it today. Now we saw a moment ago over 300 yards in the first half. Big third down play, though, coming up here. Third and long. And Brown changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Roderick Walker, the long setback. And movement, flag, whistle not thrown yet, though. And no contact. Brown coming to the uh, Roderick Kenny was in the neutral zone. Brown down at the 35 yard line, but I'm sure that's going to be the call. Yeah, that was a, a brief play. Everybody just paused for a second because they saw the movement by Roderick Kenny, the nose tackle. And Brown. <laughs> I don't think Brown wanted to do with anything. With I think the he wanted right. to go right to the turf. He was waiting for a whistle. Everybody was waiting for a whistle. And then all of a sudden, he had to scoot down the side. You'll see number, Kenny, number 61. There he flashes into the neutral. Now, look, everybody kind of pauses. Okay. <laughs> he was like, uh, wait, oh, we saw the play. And they do because there's no contact there. So, Brown no, on his own. No one blocking for him either. So, he, he is <laughs> absolutely on his own. And a lot of green jerseys closing in. John Roderick Kenny, number 61, who did <laughs> jump offside in the neutral zone, but a surprise player in the Baylor coaching. That was played much better than they maybe expected him to. He's a redshirt freshman year. He goes back, and the give straight ahead. Three cone to the outside. Has room. Make it in. Touchdown, Texas. Three cone made a couple of moves downfield that were just simply incredible he caused two baylor defenders to collide with one another he put such a sweet move on him as he came down the middle and broke it back to the outside check out free from ground level he started out the season with three 100 yard games i watched this little nifty move there and you can see both two baylor defenders collide into one another that is just beautiful running by Brees Holmes. As I said, he had three 100-yard games to start the season. Then he got injured, and you can see the kind of form he has as he looks like he's back 100% healthy. And a hip pointer, a groin injury, but Holmes with his fifth touchdown run of the year. And the change of pace to get to the outside. Dawson up with the extra point, and it is good. So Baylor receives the second-half kick, could not move the ball, and Texas takes the advantage, up by two touchdowns. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. And NEC, a leader in multimedia technology. NEC, see, hear, and feel the difference. We're going to look at Tatnap Hall here on the campus at Baylor. By the way, Baylor chartered in 1845, public of Texas, oldest school in continual existence in the state of Texas. I did not know that, John Spagnola. They're proud of being established by the Republic of Texas, too. It's, it's written everywhere around the campus. They make sure that it, they have that Republic in there. You're right. The kick again out of the end zone. Traveling with the wind, and Baylor will start at its own 20-yard line. Baylor trying to, again, get to the Cotton Bowl. and need help from Texas Tech tomorrow, but if they don't win this one today, it doesn't matter. And they need some offense in a hurry. And it would put a sour spin on their season getting into this game. But uh, they have to get something going offensively if they do want any shot at all. At least put pressure on Texas Tech tomorrow. They have to come away with a victory. Yeah, if Baylor loses today. Tech is is in. Tuck Reedy needing some offense. And they have done a lot of things on offense. We talked about it throughout the year. Giving Jeff Watson, the freshman quarterback, a lot of leeway, and he has handled it very well. But it's a crucial time in this game now. Play action fake, and here's Watson to throw on first down. He's got Ben Bronson at the 34-yard line. And Watson's got hit pretty hard after he delivered that football, but it's a smart play going back to something they established early in the football game, and that was the play action and go to their best receiver. Good hit by Watkins. You can see the tail end of that. But a strike by Watson to his star receiver. And uh, Ben Bronson's the guy you want to go to. There's Watkins on the pressure, and Watson paid for it. But a gain of about 15. So first and 10 at their own 35-yard line. And 
straight ahead is the first man in that option play, Bradford Lewis, and he is going nowhere. Tony Brackens was there at the line of scrimmage. And let's go down to Jack Carew. Jack, what do you have? Hey, guys, you know, usually bears like honey, right? But not in Waco on Thanksgiving. We like drumsticks. <laughs> right? You got one? You got one? <laughs> That's for you. Eat your heart out. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> yeah, we, we appreciate that, Jack. Thanks. Very Nobody much. ever told Jack not to talk with food in his mouth. I'll be impressed when he does that with the real bear down there. <laughs> <laughs> Second and ten as Bronson comes in motion. And Watson in trouble in the backfield, and down he goes at the line of scrimmage. Chris Aiken, the freshman out of Paris, Texas, and we have called his name often today. And I think if you want to look at the key to this football game so far, it's the fact that Texas is playing much better defense. They've stepped it up since about midway through the second quarter with plays like that from Chris Aiken. And they are flying around, making some things happen, hustling on defense. Gary Darnell's got to be pleased with the effort so far of his football team. Now Chris Aiken's with eight tackles on the day to this point. Pretty good numbers for Watson, but the one interception cost him out of the shotgun third and long. Scrambling. Going over the middle and a nice catch at midfield. That's number 21, Dustin Denard, and what a great adjustment he made coming back from the ball, John. Yeah, Watson may be hurt, but I, I think you get an idea of why this guy's a starting football player on this team. He's not the prototypical quarterback, the square jaw, 6'4", real lean body. This guy's a battler. Well, he gets the football in the back. He has pressure from all around, and not many freshmen or not many seniors for this matter would know where Dustin Denard are, is in this situation and Denard to his credit comes back to the football and that's what allowed that play to be successful first catch of the day for Denard but you're right to, to keep your composure as a freshman quarterback with all that going on so first and ten at midfield that's the give to Lewis the left side looking for room not much there maybe, maybe a yard Thomas Baskin number 90 met him See Watson holding that left wrist. See what happens. See, once he delivers the football, again, Watkins bearing down on him, but it looked like the hit was from Baskin. And he just got hit right on the wrist or the hand. And that has the smart. You know, he got hit, and later it obviously hurt, but he didn't react at all. He's waiting to see if the ball was caught. Well, you know, in, in this cooler weather, it's raining and drizzling a little bit. You get hit on your hand. It really numbs your hand. And I think it's the kind of thing you can shake off in a play or two. Play action on second and long through the hands of Denard and kicked off. Number 16, Chris Carter, and out of bounds at the 47 yard line. That's the ball that could have been caught, a little bit overthrown. And Carter with the big interception. That ball got away from Watson. Chris Carter with his second interception of the year. Dustin Denard was wide open. It seemed a lot today. Baylor's taking advantage of this play, trying to go play action and then just get the linebackers to step up. You can see Richardson stepping up first. This ball is a little high and a little hard for Denard to handle. And Carter's there to take advantage of it. Looks like he may have mistimed his jump a little bit, too. I think the ball came at him quicker than he thought. Well, it's hard to pick up the ball sometimes, Terry, with your vision as a receiver because it comes out of hands that are up in the air. And it just kind of squirts out from the middle of a pile of bodies in there. And you don't always pick it up as clearly as, you, as you'd like to. Carter had a big day last year against Baylor. Two fumble recovery. Here's Darrell Wilson going straight ahead to the 49-yard line. Here's a guy in Wilson. We mentioned earlier has had the injuries. Broke his arm in the last scrimmage before uh, the season. You can see he's playing with that cast on his left arm. And he can catch with that, but it's a little awkward at times. I've seen him put the football on the ground this year because he can't put the ball squarely in his left hand. It, it, it interrupts and distracts the way he wants to do the things he can naturally as a running back. But uh, they thought he was going to have a great year this year until he got hurt in that last scrimmage right before the season started. Kenny Harrison, number 36, is in for him right now. Round the throw. And a dangerous pass intended for Jimmy Hakes, the tight end. But Hey, Joe Maynard was out there, and he had a chance to pick that one off. And let's go down to Jack Carruth on the field. Jack? Well, Jeff Watson came off the field, and the first person to meet him was Chuck Reedy, not to talk about the interception, but to talk about the condition of the arm. I overheard the conversation. He said, are you okay? He said, yeah, coach, I am. He says, well, go get on the headset. Get ready for the next round. Tough kid in high school in a state championship, starting as a freshman in the Southwest Conference. Third and eight. 
Rod Coleman in as an extra back protection. Straight ahead, quarterback draw. Look at the speed of Brown, still on his feet. Into the 37-yard line, the first down, and Brown this time scrambling right up the middle. Well, you have two things that make a play work, and that's, that's execution, and that is uh, and the play itself. But here, watch the linebackers as they go right into pass coverage initially, and actually nobody needs to be blocked up front. Go ahead and roll it. You can see they're bailing out right away, and everybody's looking for somebody to block. Brown just has great athletic ability, and I don't think a block was thrown for him on that play by anybody leading upfield for him. Dan Neal, the center, number 69, came as close as anyone, but you're right. He, that, was just, that was just a great play. It was just the spread and the speed of Brown. So first down at the 38. They think the reverse. Roderick Walker to throw. And caught on the far sideline. Number 86, Matt Davis with the catch from Roderick Walker. Another first down. A gain of 15. It looked like Walker at first was looking long, but had Davis open on the sideline. Well, you can see right here on the outside, Jackson's going to go downfield. He's going to try and bait the, uh, the defender downfield. He does not take the bait. Watch how the defender just stays off and stays off. And finally, to his credit, he comes back to the football, and it's a complete pass. Good throw by Walker. So, you know, he, he read that very well like a quarterback. Smart play by Davis as well. Here's Wilson trying to get outside. Turns the corner and gets down to the 17-yard line and a, a hit at the end of the play. Gary Bandy, the bandit linebacker. He punished Joe Maynard, uh, the cornerback, who came up to make the hit, lowered his shoulder. I think... What's Joe Maynard trying to fill? Number four, Wilson lowers his shoulder and Maynard pays, loses that one. 5'10", 171 against 6'1", 210. I guess so. I'll take Wilson in that matchup. <laughs> Second down and three. Longhorns lead by two touchdowns. Here's the pressure. Brown gets it away. Out of the reach of Pinckney. Coverage by Kendrick Bell, and he was chased down in the backfield by Justin Still that time. Yeah, Bell, Bell, pretty good coverage on Pinckney. Again, look at the arm strength, though, of James Brown. I mean, Justin Still comes in from the outside, number 30, puts a hit on him, and he throws this football 35 yards in the air across the field on his back foot, falling to the ground. You know, Jack Aru talking to Chuck Reedy at halftime told us that they're going to have to blitz a little bit, make things happen. We talked to Bob Koch yesterday, the defensive coordinator, and he said they're going to have to do that, but he doesn't know what's going to happen. He said, I know this. When we do it, at the end of the play, somebody's band will play. <laughs> it's going to be a touchdown one way or another, or a big play one way or another. Priest Holmes now in the backfield. He gets the call. Near the first down, I don't think he got there as he is held up and thrown back. With Curtis Jones in on the stop, Joe Maynard there. Akia Cody was there as well. Big Blake Brockermeyer was pulling. It seemed like there was a lot more there initially in the play. And that Baylor defense closed quickly. There it is. Priest Holmes comes through. And you can see where Brockermeyer was making a block. And all of a sudden, they came through and closed quickly on Holmes and threw him down to the ground. That is certainly not in the spirit of Thanksgiving. <laughs> you think they're honoring that on the field, that spirit? I guess it's short. Now. See, that, that thing doesn't look too high tech, that, does it? That little tape? I, I still have, have not figured this out. Now, you, even with you explaining it in the first half, I still don't know what. Yeah, it has to reach the, that black mark there, but those are the tape hanging are, off the black mark. The black mark is ever expanding. There's a red mark on there as well. Now, look at that. There's stuff all over the place. About fourth down for the long run. And they are going for it. About a yard. Priest Holmes, the long setback. In motion is Jackson. Holmes straight ahead. Did he get there? I don't know. Justin Still, the outside linebacker, coming up. And we will wait and see. Justin Still making a couple big plays here making his presence felt on the football field. He was a linebacker. He was a wide receiver, actually, before he was a linebacker. And you can see that's why they want to use him, to blitz the quarterback, to get some pressure on the quarterback. Didn't get it. Literally, they were about three or four inches short, so John McEvick goes for it on fourth down. 
And what do you think about that, Gamble? And that is a key defensive stand, first of all, for Chuck Reedy. I think McElvay made a good play there. Uh, he missed the field goal previously. It was fourth and short. And he runs over his big left tackle on the left side. John Elmore, his left guard, Blake Brockemeyer. And Baylor came up and made a terrific play. And down 14, they had to make a play like that to stay in this football game. Well, at that point, I mean, if you kick the field goal, you're up 38 to 21. There's a lot of time, though, right now. 7 18 left in the third. The way your football team has been moving the football, I can't blame them for going forward on fourth. I mean, you got to believe you can get less than a yard. Uh, first down, here is Gerard Douglas straight ahead. Maybe he has one. That's it. Chris Aikens again in on the stop. Again, Texas, I think, establishing itself defensively. They're shutting down Baylor, running the football on early downs and forcing Jeff Watson to throw the football. And that's not something he likes to throw more out of a surprise than he does out of uh, just a third and long situation. And Gary Darnell, I, I think, has got his players playing at a level where they're doing exactly what he wanted them to do coming into this game. And they've been banged up, too. That linebacker core that you talked about earlier, they've had a different combination almost every game throughout the year. Here's Douglas again, dancing his way with some running room across the 30. And down at the 36-yard line, Gerard Douglas, the freshman out of Converse, Texas. A gain of 22 on the play in a first down. Well, Gerard Douglas' mother wanted him to go to Texas, and when he chose Baylor, she didn't speak to him for two weeks. And with plays like this, playing as a freshman here at Baylor, you can see how he's the kind of running back he just gives the ball to over and over. He may not make something happen on the first two plays, but he has a way of breaking it out after that. It's a very explosive pass. Have to give him credit to make a decision and not have your mother speak to you for two weeks. And stay with it. Over the middle and out of the hands of John Stanley. That pass may be a little bit behind him, but that was certainly one that we'll tell you he should have caught. That is a rare drop by John Stanley. It's very good hands. He comes across again. They've been using these crossing patterns all day off of play action. And he tries to run through the catch in the air. And it just connects off his elbow and pops away. So Stanley very upset that he dropped that ball. That's, a, that's an opportunity there where a receiver probably should try and uh, take his feet and, and stamp his feet a little bit, slow down as opposed to just cruising through the air and catching the football. Well, on second down, here's the option. Watson looking for room, and he's not going to find that. He gets across the 40 to the 41. And that's going to bring up third in about six or seven. Well, we've seen Denard adjust a couple of times, and Ben Bronson, that time John Stanley on the previous play, just not adjusting his route to the ball. Jeff Watson began playing in the second half of the opening game, and he's been the quarterback ever since for Baylor, facing a key third down situation. Third and five at the 41. In motion is Stanley, now he goes to the far side. And they go to Stanley near the first down marker, and I believe he has it. Knocked out of bounds by Joey Ellis, number 27, but Stanley right at the marker and knew where he was when he made the catch. And he concentrated on the football that time. John Stanley, the former walk-on, has the first down. Right, so he makes up for the previous attempt. Yeah, it was just uh, fortunate for him that it wasn't tipped and intercepted. But uh, nice job diving at the end of the play, too. Knowing where the marker is, he probably could figure out how it works better than we can. They do a lot of this for Watson, too, the quick outs, John. Again, in that situation, it's a good play to run because uh, he has the quick option and he can turn it upfield and run as well. Play action on first down. The ball is tipped again at the line of scrimmage. He had Ben Bronson over the middle. But number 97, Tim Warfield, a 6'3", 250-pound sophomore out of Grapeland, Texas. Got his mid up there. And I think you know, Jeff Watson's only six feet tall. That's why they try and move him in the pocket, because when you have a quarterback who's about six feet tall, very easy to see the ball batted down. Warfield did not hit it with his hands. It looked like it caught him right in the face mask. So second down and 10 at the 47 now. Stanley and Bronson to the near side. And out of the yard. 
to give to Douglas, who is still on his feet and loses the football. And Kyle Richardson picks it up at the 49-yard line. Gerard Douglas, the freshman, kept the legs moving and stayed on his feet. The whistle was not blown. I wonder if Chuck Reedy feels that forward progress was stopped on this play, though. They are going to rule it a turnover. But he's got a feel that Douglas was losing yardage on that play. And at some point, the referees move in and blow the whistle. There he is saying, where was the whistle on that play? Gerard Douglas breaks through, and he's fighting and scrapping for every yard he can get. At this point, he looks like he's pretty well wrapped up by Thomas going backward in that last-minute spin move. I guess the, the referees felt he was still capable of breaking out of that uh, hold by Thomas and company. Uh, and that's where Reedy is quizzing the official over right now. Chris Lewis applied the hit that caused the fumble, but I think Reedy has a case. I mean, he was certainly stopped, and that's it's a case where, you know, back is just trying to fight for the extra yardage, but that's what caused the fumble. And Baylor will take a timeout here to try to regroup. Texas has the ball after the turnover. We're back in a moment. 5.43 left in the third. Texas up 35-21. The key play here, was his momentum stopped or not, John? Well, Gerard Douglas, I think, is still squirming out. Chris Carter comes in and makes the hit on him. Chuck Reedy, if you'll recall, talked to the official. This is Gary Darnell's reaction to the official signaling first down Texas. And that's the third turnover today for Baylor. Chuck Reedy, as I was saying, was talking to the official, uh, and he gave somewhat of an objection, but I think he accepted the call for that very reason. Douglas, of course, is very capable of slipping out and making yards on that play. And Kyle Richardson, who came up with the fumble recovery, has had a huge day. He has been a part of two turnovers. The last one, the interception that led to a Texas score. And Darrell Wilson gets the call and a huge hole on the right side and carries men down to the 37-yard line. First down, Longhorns. Well, tomorrow night on ABC, all your TGIF favorites. All new, Family Matters, Boy Meets World, Step by Step, and Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Tomorrow's TGIF lineup, followed by an all new 2020 on ABC. First down, Texas, at the 38-yard line of the Baylor Bears, Daryl Wilson in the backfield again. This man has led the way, James Brown. Eric Jackson in motion. The play action to the near side. Here they come after. Well, look at him get outside. And runs out of bounds at the 32. I mean, that's a dimension. Nothing against Shea Barrett, who is the starting quarterback. And had a great year last year in solid games this year, but that's just a dimension in the offense that Brown gives them that Morenz does not. That's exactly right, and it's no discredit to Morenz, but Byron Thompson, number 91, had a shot right at him. There's Morenz on the sideline. Morenz, number 12, dressed today. He has a bad shoulder, you know, Terry, and I saw him practicing. It takes him about 15 minutes just to warm up well enough where he can throw the football effectively. So his shoulder is still hurting, and I think that weighed into the decision today to play Brown, but Brown is having another exceptional day as a starter. Over the middle on second and five, ball is caught by Eric Jackson at the 18. Chris Lewis, the free safety on the coverage, but another gain, this time of 14 yards, and the first down, and Brown has been on the money all day long. Eric Jackson in the slot. Again, the play action effective because they've been running so successfully today. And he's able to slip in and make a difficult catch low and away while he's running into traffic like that. Jackson did a good job securing the football. Hendrick Bell gave him a little extra after the play. First down, the pitch to Wilson. He gets caught by Justin Still behind the line of scrimmage. And maybe gets to the line. That's about it. Wilson getting a lot of work in the second half today. Justin still playing off the block with Jimmy Hakes the tight end threw him aside Hakes not known as a very good blocker he's known more as a receiver pushed him aside and made the tackle now this is an offensive line that many people in this conference say is the best in the conference yet Texas throughout the year has not been able to run the ball real effectively Curtis and Eric Jackson to the near side and to give in the backfield to Roderick Walker, the ball's loose, but he was down. 
as Curtis Jones, number 44, made the stop. Well, they've had some injuries on the right side. That's why they haven't been able to run the football that well. And Jay Moran's the quarterback. He's watching the other quarterback today, James Brown, have a pretty good ball game for himself. But I think you take that. Juan Kemp, the fullback, got banged up early. Uh, of course, Darrell Wilson got hurt going into the start of the season. And that's why this running game hasn't reached the kind of proportions uh, that they thought it would going into the season. Third and seven coming up, but... They looked it over, and now Baylor takes a timeout. And Baylor, if that is the case, would have only one left in this game. They took a timeout moments ago. So they are down to one timeout. Gives John McEvick a chance to talk it over with his quarterback. Well, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, ABC Sports presents regional college football action. Except for our viewers on the West Coast, it's NC State against number 13, Virginia. John and I will be in Fort Worth for Texas Tech and TCU. If Texas Tech wins or Baylor loses today, Tech goes to the Cotton Bowl. Then at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific, number one Nebraska against Oklahoma in a national showdown. That'll be a great one. Nebraska trying to win out, followed on the West Coast only by a Pac-10 matchup at 3 Pacific. Arizona State and Arizona all tomorrow here on ABC Sports. Look at Baylor, 4-2, and two, but in danger of losing this game. That's right, in Texas, the way they wanted this whole thing to work out is to win this football game and have Texas Tech lose tomorrow, and then they would be co-champions in the Southwest Conference. And John Makovic would get his seventh win, something he hasn't had yet here in his tenure at Texas. And a bowl game, the Sun Bowl, is where everyone figures that they will end up, win or lose, and certainly a good showing to this point here today. Wilson and Walker in the backfield. Round the pass. He's got a man. There's Eric Jackson. Touchdown. Joe Maynard was there, but you give Eric Jackson a little bit of room, and he's going to make you pay. Jackson working one-on-one. -on -one. Eric Jackson playing exceptionally well today, working one-on-one -on -one with Joe Maynard. The formation isolated him one-on-one, -on -one, and you can see some blitzing up front. That means man coverage all across the board there. And Jackson works Maynard inside and breaks it back out for the touchdown. And that ball, again, was thrown beautifully. Bevo doesn't look happy, but trust me, folks, he is. He's thrilled at this point. And Dawson in for the extra point again. He's thrilled not to be a turkey today, that's all. Thrilled to be... A Longhorn today. You're absolutely right. Texas with a 42 to 21 lead. They have broken this one open in the second. We still got a long way to go though. Three minutes and 24 left in the third quarter. Again, you'll see a blitz on the outside here. You'll see man coverage all across the board here. And Jackson gets to work one on one. He breaks it out on Joe Maynard. Go ahead and roll it. See the man coverage, the blitz. Everybody's locked up, and Maynard has to has no inside help, so he has to play an inside technique. And Jackson just breaks it outside. So there you saw Makovic have a little time to talk to people uh, and work out what he wanted to call using the timeout. And I think we have a foggy lens there from Jackson as he was, yeah, he was blowing on the lens. <laughs> he looked like Gary Reasons in his interview out in Oregon last week. He, he had a bunch of hot breath on, on his lens. But uh, again, Jackson able to take advantage of the coverage and a good call by Makovic and good use of the timeout to get the right coverage that he wanted. There you go. We're taking care of the lens. Well, you've got to give John Makovic credit in this case for starting at James Brown today because you know, Shea Morenz has a lot of supporters. He had been the quarterback, the starting quarterback. And to start a Brown today, he knew he would take some heat. Well, it's worked out. I mean, a lot of people want to see Brown start as well, but it, is a, it was a gamble, of course. And Brown with great numbers today. 13 out of 19, 222 yards and three touchdowns. They saw Muhammad and Douglas back deep for Baylor. And his goal line is Khalif Muhammad. And gets to the 28 and knocks out of bounds. And that's where Baylor will start the next offensive series. And let's go down to the field for a moment and Jack Aru. Jack? Hey, guys, you were talking about the Texas Longhorns angling for a shot of the birth in the Sun Bowl. Well, the Alamo Bowl's also in there. But everybody, conventional wisdom, says they will go to a bowl game. 
And you know, the last time they went to a bowl game was back on January 1st, 1991. Only six players on this present team went to that bowl game. They lost, and, and you know what? All six players were simply redshirts. Nobody on this team has ever played in a bowl game. The Longhorns are looking forward to their trip. And that was the game they lost 46-3 to my, in my, against Miami in the Cotton Bowl, one of the worst beatings ever witnessed by a Texas Longhorn team. So they're kind of glad they did that play on this particular team. Here's Joey Ellis with the pick at the 40. There's a flag down. Ellis still on his feet. Gets out of bounds at the 42, so we'll see what the flag means. Yeah, I think, I think Bronson's going to get called with the flag. Joey Ellis had excellent position on that play. He's not going to give up anything deep, up by 21 points. And Bronson came in, tried to knock the football away. Now, Watson just kind of threw that ball up for grabs. Either that or, or Bronson got his, basically, yeah, he got his hand yeah, in Joey Ellis' face. And that was after he made the interception against an out and up. But again, Joey Ellis is not going to bite on this fake. You can see he's dropping deep. He's in good, good position. And right here, yeah, you can see he just grabs the face mask Bronson does on Joey Ellis. Good positioning. And you'll see right there. And the official had to have a pretty quick eye to see that. That, that did not take all that long. Well, the official was standing right there, though. So he had a good look at it. Then Bronson on the call. Four turnovers for Baylor. And... The Bears have turned it over on their last three possessions. Takeaways key to Texas this year. They have 13 takeaways. They were four and one to start the season. Then they only had six over a stretch where they went two and three. Now they have four today and they're heading toward a victory here. And this is where perhaps you see the running game really come into play. And as I say that, back goes Brown. And they go for the quick strike. And he's got his tight end. Number 81, Pat Fitzgerald near the goal line and in. So much for a running game. And I think right now, Baylor is reeling defensively. You know, they're missing some starters on defense. And James Brown, ability to move around in the pocket, has taken the focus of the Baylor football team onto him. And they're just leaving people wide open. Pat Fitzgerald on the back side of that formation is the beneficiary of the fact that Brown rolled to his right, threw across the field in the... Certainly, you've got to look, take a look at James Brown now as a starting quarterback and be really excited about the things he can do for this football team. And you get the sense that Baylor right now is just stunned. You know, you don't ever believe as a player that this can happen to you, and they didn't expect it. They, they took the field position, remember? And they, you know, yep. they were hoping to get into the fourth quarter with the win behind them. But uh, they can't wait to get to the fourth quarter. This third quarter has been brutal for them. Texas with the extra point moves it to 49 to 21. It was 28 to 21 at the half in favor of the Longhorns. Let's take a look again. Yeah, look at this again. Uh, uh, Fitzgerald is on the right side of the screen. He's working back against the grain. And this was a design play all the way. Brown fakes to the right, comes back, throws the football. And he does a good job of getting just over that marker for the touchdown. The official again in good position to make the call. But 21 third quarter points here for Texas. Well, and James Brown, a redshirt freshman who has not had that much playing time. I mean, he's played this year. He's started now three ball games. Uh, to look off the secondary like that, and it was a called play, but and that's presence. He shows a lot more presence than most first-year quarterbacks. Matt Fitzgerald, just a sophomore. You know, you look at Baylor this year on their other two losses in the Southwest Conference. They were blown out. Texas A&M beat them 41-21. Texas Tech beat them 38-7. So when they've lost in the Southwest Conference this year, they've lost big. And deja vu all over again for Douglas and Muhammad back deep for the Bears. The losses, though, for Baylor this year, three losses overall, Texas Tech, Texas A&M, and USC. Three teams, three very good teams. I mean, yeah. Texas A&M, the, the one team that won't go to a bowl because of probation. They certainly would be there. They played USC when they were ranked 16. I mean, they played two ranked teams, lost to them. There's, there's certainly no embarrassment there. And Texas Tech, as you said, is a very good football team. And I think people are, you can see why there's an element of frustration with the fans of Texas because they see the potential in this football team and it's being realized here this afternoon. Here's Gerard Douglas at his own four-yard line. Looks for a seam and doesn't find one. Number six, Quentin Wallace with the big hit.
been a day to cheer for the Longhorns. Barry Darnell, the defensive coordinator with his team back on the field. And that's really been the story, especially in the second half. Baylor with 21 first half points, and they have not been close here in the second half. Now they have it, and they're, having, they're, they're being forced to do things they're not comfortable with. They're comfortable running the football and throwing in play action. They're not comfortable dropping back like this in the shotgun and just throwing the football on every down. The intended receiver, Khalif Muhammad. And that was not a well-thrown football. That's a day to flip if you're a Longhorn cheerleader. Spagnola used to do that after every touchdown. That's why I tried not to score very often. <laughs> you're not that good an athlete? <laughs> ah, you job. There's Gary Darnell. Shouting instructions to his defense. And the defensive line that here in the second half of special has really put pressure on Jeff Watson. Out of the shotgun again on second and ten. Here they come. He gets it away with a little screen to Muhammad. Behind his blocker looking for room and gains about eight on the play, but he is really hit out of bounds. Chris Carter, the free safety, knocked him out. You know, one of the things we had talked about, too, is that whether or not this team really had pulled together like they had said. There was talk about them coming together over the last two football games, and we weren't really sure if uh, you know, the proof would be today and how they played against this Baylor football team. But, you know, from every indication we've seen on this football field, uh, this team is playing with a lot of hustle and determination, and it seems that uh, it, it uh, bodes well for John Makovic and a lot of the people who, who has a lot of negative things to say about him. John Makovic? That Wake Forest, of course, Illinois, Kansas City Chiefs. There's a couple over the middle. There's Damon Lines. He can't hang on. And the ball is loose, and Texas is saying it's their ball. I can't believe that would be the case. Now, he didn't have possession of the football, and I saw at least one official wave it incomplete. Get a little pass over the middle, and it's something they are not fully comfortable with in this particular instance. Chuck Grady trying to stay positive at this point, but not a whole lot to clap about in terms of offense in the second half. He's got to hope that he gets a drive out of his offense, and he needs a turnover to get back in this game. It's as simple as it goes, down by as many points as they are, 28 points. By Atterbury in the front once again. Chris Carter is deep for the Longhorns. Calls for a fair catch, is then... Drop kicks it out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Actually up about the 41-yard line. A punt of 27 yards, no return. And the Longhorns will start at the 41. Take a moment, go down to the field, and check in with Jack Aroot. Jack? Well, Terry, I believe John Spagnola was the guy that at the beginning of the telecast said Blake Brockermeyer may go to the NFL. Well, he's taken those first steps. He petitioned a six-member advisory committee that the NFL has set up to advise him as to where they think he would be drafted. It's the same situation that Napoleon Kaufman used and elected to stay another year. But as Keith Jackson would say, Brookemeyer is a hoss. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a Keith Jackson of a day, no. Jack, I don't have that ready. Here's Eric Jackson near the first down marker, maybe a couple of yards short on first down. We know Finley was there. Look at what he's done. 33 straight games now. Brockemeyer has started. And he hasn't given up a sack in his last 14 games either. And he's clearly an excellent football player. And it's interesting because as Jack Arruda had told us, uh, this six-member board is made up of general managers, uh, director of player personnel, scouts, and they try to assess college talent. And uh, I think it's a wise thing that's been set up uh, between the NFL and the colleges. Sometimes they have frayed relationships, but in this case, the good system that's set up to help younger ballplayers figure out where they should be. Ron Walker with a lot of room. Down to the 31-yard line, and right now it looks like Baylor's defense is dead tired. Justin Still, number 30, finally made the stop, but they're dragging on the defensive end. He's a happy man. Let's uh, isolate on the all-southwestern tackle as he works down the field on Byron Thompson, number 91. And when you have a good back, you can cut back you create a cutback lane like that, like Brockemeyer did, there's nobody on the backside of the defense to help out. And that's what a back does. He starts right, he looks back, and Walker using his vision and using the block of a guy like Brockemeyer to break it back against the grain. 
Corby Brooks, the right guard for Texas, walking off the field moments ago. Looks like he was injured a little bit on that play. So first down at the 31 of Baylor. Walker, the lone step back. Round the throw again. Why not? Right through the hands of the intended receiver, that was Curtis Jackson, who was open at the 20-yard line. Well, there you get a look at the arm of Brown, too. Now, that was a rocket. Yeah, sometimes you can break up a receiver's hands. You can see when Brockermeyer, as I said, has not given up a sack in 14 games. You can see, again, in, in college football, as in the pros, you extend those arms, you push people by, you get a good pass set, extended those arms, and push Thompson easily out to the outside of Brown. So second and ten. Out of the eye now. Wilson, the defense. Round the throw again. Throws it to Eric Jackson at the 15. A nifty move and down to the 13-yard line. And Texas receivers just wide open right now. The defense is really tired, and James Brown is throwing it right on the money. Yeah, there is Eric Jackson coming across the field, and he settles into the zone. This is a wise decision. Comes under pink, he opens things up and clears things out for him. Works up field and makes a nice move inside. Jackson having himself quite a day today, 5'10", 185 pounder. Yeah, he had the bruise on his elbow early on, too. You saw it wrapped up. Hasn't affected it, though. First down, and they go to Wilson on the left side, and he has got room. The high leg stop and action down to the three-yard line. Well, the blitz came again. Wilson broke it back outside. You know, Bob Koch was a very interesting interview, the defensive coordinator here at Baylor. I was talking about defensive philosophy, and he said there's three kinds of defenses. The kind of watch things happen, the kind of make things happen, and the kind of wonder what the heck's happening. <laughs> and I think right now, he said we like to be the second kind that make things happen, but he's going to wind up being the third kind of defense, wondering what the heck happened here this afternoon. Texas band, along with, what, four or 5,000 Longhorn fans? Here in Waco. Now second in a long one at the four. The give to Wilson straight ahead. And may have gotten a yard. He's near a first down. May have it. As the clock is running out in the third quarter, they will stop to take a look. And he indeed does have the first down. Surprise you to all that Texas has continued to throw on this drive. I know it's still I know that we're still in the third quarter. Well, I think there's a couple things. The wind is still behind them. I think they, they, they probably realize it's not going to be as easy to throw into the wind and move the football, and they're just clicking on all cylinders right now offensively, and they want to put up as many points as they can, and there's an element of frustration here, too, Terry. They want to they move the football and put on the show. We go to the fourth quarter. Texas up 49-21. Back with more between Baylor and Texas after this word from our ABC station. We head to the fourth quarter. Texas knocking on the door once again. They lead 49-21. Terry Gannon, John Spagnola, and Jack Aru. Boyd Casey Stadium. The rollout by Brown. He throws to the end zone and a touchdown. Chad Lucas out of the backfield. And the Longhorns are rolling. Chuck Reedy's got to be wondering what hit him on that play. Chad Lucas was open for the touchdown. Steve Bradley, the tight end, was also open on the touchdown. The play action pass set up quite nicely, and you'll see the receivers come right to you. There's Bradley, 89, releasing. The fullback, 11, Chad Lucas releasing. It's kind of like a, a jump pass almost. A little shot put. Yeah, it was, wasn't it, from James Brown? Feeling good at this point. Phil Dawson's been a busy man. The spot by Lucas who scored the touchdown. It's up and it is good once again. Chad Lucas with a touchdown catch. Texas blowing out Baylor right now, 56 to 21. And back in Waco, Texas. Just into the fourth quarter, Texas 
leading 56 to 21. Chad Lucas used to be a quarterback. In fact, he played a number of games in a part-time role at Texas. You know, one of the running backs came out of the backfield to catch the touchdown pass. Also holds on the extra point. And even the Bears getting into the Thanksgiving mood, devouring a turkey. I don't see Jack Root anywhere near that live bear. We saw the mascot earlier. Okay. <laughs> the pooch kick on the kickoff, taken at the 32-yard line. They, you can't see a Root anywhere. Nowhere in the picture. Not even in that end zone. He's somewhere down in the lower abdomen right now. Hey, guys, I am here with the bear. And you've challenged me that I would not feed Bobby Bear. Hey, Bob, here. <laughs> you don't want him? Oh, no, he wants my arm. <laughs> <laughs> well, he liked marshmallows in the first quarter. It must be that cologne you're using, Jeff. <laughs> oh, oh, the bear? <laughs> Jack, I do have newfound respect for you, though. 31-yard line. Baylor takes over. And Watson out of the shotgun now. Looking over the middle, batted down again. And actually almost caught by Bradford Lewis at the end of that play. That's about the fourth time, though, that a big defensive lineman has stuck the paw up there and blocked the pass. This time, Chris Aikens, number 96, who's had a big day. Chris Aikens, the true freshman, made a number of plays like this today, coming right up the middle, and again... You know, Watson is not all that tall, a quarterback, and just about six feet tall, and it's difficult for him to get it over those linemen when they're so close and so much in his face, and they're going to be turning it loose and, and rushing now for the rest of the game. Watson the throw again, and a little bit behind John Stanley, and he can't make the catch. He was between defenders over the middle. Again, Stanley a little disappointed. He expected the football out in front of him. Instead, again, it's on his left hip. Remember, earlier in the football game, he bobbled the ball like this. And this one, he just, you know, there's just no way he gets a hand on it to knock it away. But he's disappointed with that throw, as was Watson. But you got to realize Watson's under an awful lot of pressure right now. Well, and remember, too, he, he took the hit on the wrist earlier in the third quarter. So you wonder how much that's bothering him. Again with the shotgun here on third and ten. The near side and overthrows the intended receiver, Ben Bronson. Haji Allen, number two on the coverage. And again, three and out for the Baylor Bears. That's been the story in the second half. And a frustrated Jeff Watson. But a pretty good first half. He moved the team on every series. Through the one interception early where it was tipped. That was a big turnover. Texas ended up scoring after the interception. But... Second half has been all Longhorn. And those punts have been into the wind. It's the first time he's punted with the wind behind him. Spiraling kick that Chris Carter fields at the 29. It is swarmed under and driven back. We'll see where they rule his forward progress. Number 11, Kendrick Bell, a cornerback, made the initial hit. And Texas will take over there. Back in Waco, Texas, 14-24 left in the game, and this is how we got to this point. Now, Texas, you can see with 56 plays, they have 56 points. That's pretty good efficiency there. 514 yards in total offense, and they had 206 of that in the third quarter. And right there is the key to turnovers. Four turnovers for Baylor has cost them 21 points in this football game. Let's see if Texas continues to throw. Brown to Wilson on uh, first down. Four room outside. Justin still gets them right about the first down marker. So they go to the running attack. I want to ask you about this game. We've set it up. Baylor obviously still coming in, had a chance to go to the Cotton Bowl, certainly share in the Southwest Conference title. What does this mean, do you think, to John Makovic's club? Still with a chance, outside chance, to share that title. But if that doesn't happen, it's still a huge win if they continue this way for Makovic. Sure, it does. It gets him his seventh win. I mentioned he hasn't had that yet. Then he goes to the Sun Bowl, and if they play well in that game, it gets him an eighth win. I think more importantly than all of that, 
is, is that you get a good feeling going into the offseason. You get the team pulling together with a key victory or two out down at the end of the stretch run of the season. And that's as important as, any, as anything else uh, for a football team. Well, a catch by Pinckney, and they get the first down, and the timing from James Brown has been great today. They're wearing green, and they're awfully happy at this point. So it must be the, the holiday spirit. Same to you down there. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Boy, that puts a smile on your face. I'll send that out to everyone, yeah. Well, Greedy does not have a smile on his face, though. Well, that dressing will go down hard tonight. Wilson drops the football, and Baylor has it. George McCullen comes up with the football after what would have been a big gain by Darrell Wilson. And again, you talk about that arm and the cast, you know, it's, it's, it's tough for him to hang on to the ball. Exactly what happened. Every time I've seen him put the ball on the ground, he's either been trying to switch it from one arm to the other. And let's see, it's in his right arm. It's in there pretty firmly. And let's see if he, yeah, it just slips right out of there again when you don't have full use of your left hand or when you have a bulky object on your arm and you try and put your hands together, he just popped the football out himself with his, with his left arm. Didn't really get hit, it just came out. The back is Jeff Watson. Trying to at least get some confidence here. The gift to the freshman Douglas, chances outside, and Roman Watkins was there at the 44-yard line along with Tremaine Brown. Get a good look at Douglas today, who really, throughout the season, we mentioned he has not played all that much at the ankle injury, and they expect huge things from this man throughout his career. And to get a little look at what those things will be. I mean, the cut to the outside, the speed, the quickness. Straight ahead, Bradford Lewis. But I don't know. I mean, he'll play, but you got to realize he has some good people in front of him. Khalif Muhammad, the sophomore. We saw him make big plays today. Brandell Jackson is a junior, so nobody's leaving. Gerard Douglas will step up uh, and get more playing time next year. But uh, when you look at the three tailbacks in this Baylor offense coming into this game, they combine for 1,219 yards, and that, that's a pretty good clip from that position. It's a good trifecta, but when you win a guy in a recruiting war like that, you make sure you get a punt. He's, he's going to play. Here's the pitch to Douglas outside. He cut back, and he's got room. It's all foot speed from here. And knocked down at the six-yard line. Chris Carter caught him. And on cue, Gerard Douglas with a long run. That well, must be easier to run with the wind in your back because in the second half, the wind and the going right to left has been a factor for every team that's had the football. Baylor finally getting something going. But watch the move in the open field. The Gerard Douglas throws on number 17, Trey Thompson. Number 17, look, coming in to make it, forget it. He's just by him. He's so quick, and he didn't slow down, cut against the grain, and he just froze Trey Thomas. Now, Carter had an angle on him, but uh, that's good speed just to catch him there. To the outside is Douglas looking for the end zone. Touchdown, Gerard Douglas. Well, he got to the outside, but... Dustin Denard, a wide out with a key block on the line of scrimmage to break it outside. Can you see the good fake up front? That brings most of the defense inside. It's actually Stanley. John Stanley, 14, locking on. And I, right at this point, Douglas knows he scored. He's just coast into the end zone. That's styling it a little bit for the have a little time. Stanley threw the first block. Denard late threw a block, and nobody touched him. is up and it is good so baylor breaks a 42 to 0 texas run to get back on the board the well-fed baylor bear jack root nowhere to be seen once again and bevo boy he contains his excitement very well doesn't he he's got to be jumping for joy inside Texas went on a 42 to nothing scoring run. Baylor finally just answered 56 to 28 to score with 12-18 left in this one. Curtis and Eric Jackson back deep for Texas. Line 
drive kick and Curtis Jackson at the eight. Out to the 35 yard line and Texas good field position once again to start their drive. Well, TFA College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevy Lumina. The features you want, the safety you need at an affordable price. That's genuine Chevrolet. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. J.C. Penney, doing it right. And MasterCard. MasterCard, it's more than a credit card. It's smart money. The Hardy's still in their seats on a cool, windy afternoon here in Waco, Texas. And that score is right if you just joined it. Straight ahead to the 37-yard line. The carry out of the backfield by Roderick Walker. Gary Bandy in there to make the stop. This guy's been solid, too, Gary Bandy. They call it the bandit linebacker spot. Junior college transfer out of Coffeyville Junior College. A lot of speed. Now they turn him loose. Pass rusher. 6-4-238. Second and six at the 39. And Brown to throw again. Overthrows the intended receiver, Clinton Wallace. Well, if you'll notice, John McAvick taking no chance. I mean, he has his starters in. He has not changed the offense he's running. I mean, he's up 28 points, and you would think at some point he may back off a little bit, but... Uh, you know, he's using James Brown, and James Brown, these are his updated statistics now. And you can see he's having himself quite a year, throwing for almost 80%. That's probably in the mid-60s. 12 touchdowns, just two interceptions. And that's just three starts over 1,000 yards of throwing. I think John McAvick has found a quarterback. Around 18 out of 26 today for 289 yards and five touchdowns. You saw earlier that that was a Texas record. Roderick Walker stood up at the line of scrimmage and swarmed under. Bandy was there first again. Nakia Cody, number eight, also in on the stop. Nifty move. <laughs> nice way to get up off the ground. But you know, uh, Baylor with another stop here. They had a touchdown before. It's 28 points. And I think McAvick, quite honestly, wants to keep his starters in this game until he gets down to around the five minute mark because a lot of things can happen. We saw Baylor move before. They hold here. If they score again and get a turnover, uh, we could have a wild finish. You never know right. in these kind of series. Put it this way. Points in the first quarter went on the board. I mean, bam, bam. I think Makovic is very concerned. We'll have to get one more score before he pulls his starter. And Bronson lets it roll down to the 18-yard line, and Baylor will take it over there. Saturday, ABC College football kicks off at 12 noon Eastern, number four, Florida. Takes on cross-state rival number seven, Florida State in Tallahassee. And then at 3.30 Eastern, you've got Fred Couples, Payne Stewart, Paul Azinger, and Tom Watson playing the Skins game. And then live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Fighting Irish of Notre Dame tackle the USC Trojans in that long-time rivalry at Saturday here on ABC Sports. This is the year, I mean, Notre Dame has dominated that series for so long. A lot of people think SC at home will finally uh, trip up Lou Holtz. He was watching on the keeper and may have gained two, but he took a beating for the carry. Go down to the field and actually we'll hold it right here as we look at Jeff Watson holding that left wrist again, it looks like. Yeah. Norman Watkins was the guy who hit him. That's where he was hit before. It's obviously bruised. And every time he either falls on it or takes a hit on it, you can see the kind of attitude he has is Moore is going to check into the game. Lamont Moore, number 10, is actually going to warm up. He's over there on the sideline, but uh, Jeff Watts is just a tough guy. He played linebacker, he played free safety, he didn't want to play quarterback because uh, these kind of guys just thought they weren't tough enough. Takes a hit. Here's Gerard Douglas, the freshman, has a first down across the 30 to the 32. And let's go down to the field, check in with Jack Aru. Hey, guys, I always like to play with mascots. You know, Bevo here, as you said, doesn't do much. So, you know, I've run with the Buffalo. I've driven the Oklahoma Sooner, Schooner. Guys, what could I do with Bevo? <laughs> I'll show you what you can do. <laughs> hey, I'll be back in a minute, guys. <laughs> you know, J 
Jack has found something that looked to have a lot of aptitude at. Down is Watson in. The ball is loose. Picked up by Watkins and to the eight-yard line. Tony Brackens forced the fumble. Watson coughed it up, and he is still shaken up. And I think his inability to use his left hand is definitely hurting him, but it's hurting his football team right there. Brackens made the stop. He's definitely in a lot of pain. Knocked the ball loose, and Watkins came over and picked it up. Let's just see if he has any kind of control that ball with the left hand. No, it's just knocked out. That's a good play by Brackett, swatting it away. Watkins comes in eventually and makes the recovery and almost scores himself. Lifton Rubin finally made the tackle on Norman Watkins. He's trying to get outside and just doesn't put it away. And then again, I think uh, Watson is just much more comfortable rolling out of the pocket than he is drop, dropping back. But there, there he was flushed out and just had nothing that he could do with the football. And I think that might be the end of Jeff Watson for the day. And now a backup quarterback, John Dutton, is in for Texas. So James Brown finally goes out of the game. Here's Darrell Wilson, left side, has room down to the one-yard line. Nakia Cody, number eight, made the stop. So Shea Morant doesn't come into the game. He's still banged up. And they go right to what would be the third string quarterback, John Dutton. Freshman out of Fallbrook, California. And as Texas takes over here, this is the sixth drive that Texas has started in Baylor territory. A lot of those came when they had the wind to their back in the third quarter, and in the second quarter they had the wind to their back too. But Wilson jumped out of a tackler and got right to the end zone. The quick move as soon as he got the ball to get away from the tackler in the backfield. And there are some points on the board today, folks. Yeah, and I think it's time for John Makovic to uh, pull things in a little bit here. Keep in mind, this is a series that they will continue to play, not only next year, but then the, the dissolved uh, dissolution of the uh, Southwest Conference when they go to the Big 12. And, you don't want to run it up too much uh, on a team that's just a couple hours north of you. And I'm sure that uh, he felt at this point, uh, I'd be really surprised if he saw the starters in for the rest of the game for Texas. In fact, in 1996, when they go to the Big 12, they'll be in the same division, too. So they will play each other all the time. Well, Dawson with the extra point and 63 on the board for the Texas Longhorns. 8.39 left in this one, and a huge Thanksgiving day for Texas. Only people in this area that, that would be more tired than the defense of Baylor, these guys right here, the cheerleaders, 63 flips. You can see they're, they're not landing the as well as they did earlier. Those legs are getting tired. Not quite as solid as they once were. Well, 63 points on the board for Texas, and that's the most in a game since 1977 when they scored 72 points against Rice in a 72 to 15 win. It's a long time. Now we mentioned these teams going into the Big 12 in 1996, and the Southwest Conference teams will all be in the South. Baylor, Texas, Texas A&M, and Texas Tech. You have the two divisions, and so those rivalries will stay intact. The big changes there in the last couple of weeks, John, the coaching change. That's right. Jim Walden's out at Iowa State. Bill McCartney, of course, stepped down at Colorado. Gary Gibbs just announced he's stepping down, as did Pat Jones at Oklahoma State. So a lot of coaching changes in, in the Big 8, which will eventually become the Big 12. Lamont Moore in at quarterback for Watson now. A sophomore out of Waxahachie, Texas. Up to Ben Johnson. And thrown out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Let's go down to the field and check in with Jack Aroot. Well, first, Jeff Watson had his hand stepped on, and this is not the problem with Jeff now. He had, a, he had an elbow injury a couple of weeks ago, and according to the team physician, he has re-aggravated that elbow injury. You can see they're working on him right now. They're going to take off the protective padding that they had on the elbow, ice it down, but it could be the end of the day for Jeff Watson. All right, Jack, second half for Watson. Not a good one. Four out of 14 for 42 yards, and he had two interceptions as well. Moore to Douglas, and he has got room to the outside. Look at his speed as he goes by Carter. Wow. Forget about it. Yes. Did he change speeds? 
Not only that, I mean, 51 yards. When he did it to Trey Thomas earlier, broke that safety when he scooted down the right sideline, and now he freezes Chris Carter. Again, uh, why, why would you be a safety? Imagine being a safety right now. You're Chris Carter, number 16, and this guy comes out. Okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. I don't have you. No, I mean, he just changed gears. It looked like he was going to third. All of a sudden, boom, he goes up one. And it, that lateral speed takes him to the side, and he's just out, able to outrun everybody. Watch the little move there. There it is. With that kind of speed, he's off into the end zone. Yeah, and you wonder if Carter thought he had another man beyond him. He didn't make much of a play on him at all. The extra point up and good. Well, this is the way this one has gone, folks. I mean, expect a few more before this one is over. 63 to 35. Well, you figure if you're Baylor before the game and you score 35 points, you a pretty good shot. Not so today. Well, don't forget tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, ABC Sports presents regional college football action, except for you on the uh, West Coast. NC State takes on number 13, Virginia, and Texas Tech tackles TCU. Then at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific, it's the big showdown, the rivalry. Number one, Nebraska against Oklahoma. And following that on the West Coast only, a Pac-10 matchup, three Pacific. Arizona State takes on Arizona. It's all tomorrow here on ABC Sports. How about Gerard Douglas, though? 14 carries, 176 yards, two touchdowns here today. And I'll tell you, you know, we talked about these two teams going into the Big 12, Terry. 98 total points. Maybe they should realign them and put them in the whack. This is you know, this is a whack football game. Yeah. Look like this many points. Well, there are a few teams going to the whack as well. From this conference, you look at the quadrants. They have four quadrants, of course. TCU, SMU, and Rice going into quadrant one with Tulsa, and there is the rest of the league. And so, the, I mean, the whack. Awfully good already, and in this year having a great year. That's a much improved conference two years from now, too. Curtis Jackson with a fair catch in the end zone. Actually, a touchback in the end zone. You look at what was part of the Metro. Houston from this conference going uh, into a new conference yet to be named with Cincinnati, Memphis, Tulane, Louisville, Southern Miss, and those are the schools as of right now. And they are waiting word on a couple of uh, schools. DePaul, one of them. There should be uh, at least one other school in that conference. Going back to the WAC, though, TCU and uh, Rice will fit in quite nicely. TCU is a wide-open offense. Pat Sullivan's the head coach there. And, and now you have two teams running the wishbone, Rice and Air Force in the WAC. So that'll make some, for some real interesting football. John Dutch back in at quarterback. And here is Darrell Wilson. Bounces off a of tackler. He was up, but stayed on his feet. And out to the 26-yard line. Charles Horton, the backup defensive end out of Dallas, number 94. Hit him first. Here's a look at Horton. He's going to have his knee scoped on Monday. He's got the bad knee, but he's playing through it. Monday, though, they're going to go in and, and work on the knee. Dutton with the pitch to Wilson. Burst of speed, and he has the first down out to the 34-yard line. And it's been a long day for Bevo, a good one. But he's, he's heading out of here. He's heading back to Austin. He's seen enough. No correlation between Jack Aruch's visit in the last five minutes and taking off. Huh? And I don't want to touch that one. Dave. And the bear. You were talking about Charles Horton earlier with the knee surgery. They had a real good nose tackle, Steve Strahan who also had knee surgery. Uh, he's got a shot at the pros here playing at Baylor. And to the coaching staff's credit, he might have been able to come back and play, and they said, no, if you have a chance to play pro next year, you need to get this knee fixed right away, so why don't you go ahead, get the knee done, and then with the nine-month rehab that is associated with that kind of knee injury and surgery afterwards, you'll be in a better position to play pro football next year. So I think it shows the kind of job that uh, Chuck Reedy and, and his coaching staff, they have a real good rapport very friendly staff, very outgoing, and you get the sense in practice that uh, this is a, a team that's going to stay together for a long time, playing well this year, surprising some people. They're, they have a young team, and they're going to continue to play well. You know, talking to Chuck Reedy the other day in his office, though, he, he looked at the schedule two years from now in that Big 12, and he said his jaw just dropped. He said, wait a minute, we've got to get a whole lot better before that. 
That was, what, the 1997 season? They have Miami on the schedule, and they have Oklahoma and Nebraska, Colorado. They have another non-conference huge game as well, besides Miami. It's a tough, tough schedule. Let's check in again with Jack Carew. Jack? Hey, guy, this, you know, you know, this game is running a little long, so <laughs> I thought I'd get a quick run back to Austin. I'll catch my flight to Florida State, Florida. So you guys have a good time for the rest of the game. Me and Bebo, we're going out to have some turkey. <laughs> don't, don't forget the shovel, Jack. Where That's all that been shovel? taken care of, guys. I clean up real well. Jack taking care of business. Baylor, getting back to that previous point, though, has seven, in off uh, seven offensive and defensive players returning on their football field for next season. Wilson over the middle, leaping close to a first down, maybe about a yard short or so. But, I mean, on the other side of the coin, too, Texas uh, was supposed to challenge this year for the conference championship. Uh, that may very well happen if things turn out their way tomorrow. But they have nine starters returning on offense and eight on defense. So uh, they, uh, again, will, as always, be expected to challenge not only for the Southwest Conference Championship next year, uh, but also in the national rankings. And Bronson back and awaits Vasek's punt. Oh, it almost hits Muhammad, actually. And this will be down at about the 16-yard line, inside the 17-yard line. I think Bronson's got to be willing to step up there with the wind behind him. That's twice now that he hasn't been able to field a punt. It's not all that easy, but uh, it's very difficult for Vasek to punt into the wind, and he should be up in better position to field it. <laughs> what? Hey, Bobby, come on. What are they doing with this guy? I am not going to touch that one, as a matter of fact. And I, I hope that's a robot camera there. Well, the, the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are, surprise, surprise, James Brown of Texas and Gerard Douglas from Baylor. Douglas with a big second half. Brown with a great game, 18 out of 26, 289 yards and five touchdowns. And Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their business, academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Those are your genuine Chevrolet players of the game. Well, here's the reason that they have to change bears every two years or so. At some point, they get a little bit big and go ahead and snap at cameramen. And extra duty pay, I guess, for our guy down there. Eric, Eric Lydell. Lydell. Yeah. <laughs> and he's keeping his distance now. He you is. See that. He's about five feet away. Lamont Moore on the throw throws behind John Stanley, the intended receiver. Moore only a sophomore. And he was expected to be the quarterback this year. Coming in or out of spring football. He won a state championship, actually, as a high school starter, was 35-4. And, and, of course, Jeff Watson showed up on Kansas campus and uh, has taken the reins all season long. Right now, he was really popped on that left elbow. In fact, took three or four shots and is now icing it down on the sideline. 4.37 left in this game. And there is Douglas swarmed under. Number 97, Tim Warfield. Warfield doing what his free safety, his strong safety can't do, and that is challenge Douglas one-on-one -on -one and, and be able to wrap him up and tackle him. See Tim Warfield, number 97, plays off the block of the center and guard. He's double-teamed, so great job by him on the play.